Welcome board for June 23rd, 2015 at 9 a.m. at the District Brooksville Service Office. Uh, Mr. Adams, do we have a quorum? Mr. Chairman, we do. Thank you very much. And let's please stand for invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for being an awesome God that you are and that you allow us to assemble here today. And, um, and God, we pray for your wisdom and guidance as we this board makes decisions and and um, we search and we uh, really look for your guidance through this, God. We thank you and praise you. We ask this in your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United, United, States, United States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. <coughs> I have to admit, I like the red. and see the ties are red and everything. <laughs> red ties. Let me be, uh, begin by quickly introducing the members of the board and our two executive staff members seated at the dais. To my right is our executive director, Robert Beltran. Uh, to Robert's right is vice chair, Randy Maggart, who represents Pasco County. To my left is secretary, Jeff Adams, who represents Pinellas County. And treasurer, David Dunbar, who represents Pinellas and Hillsborough Counties. The remaining board members listed in the order of seniority are Paul Simpf, rep represents Polk County. <coughs> Carlos Baruf, who's, who represents Manti County, is, is on the phone. Carlos, good morning. Wendy good Griffin morning. represents you, Hillsborough Chairman. County. George Mann represents Polk County. Brian Beswick represents Hardy, DeSoto, and Highlands Counties. Tommy Bronson, who unfortunately can't be here uh, today, represents Hernando and Marion Counties. Mike Moran represents Sarasota and Charlotte Counties. And Ed Armstrong represents Pinellas County. There is one vacancy which represents Citrus, Sumter, Lake, and Levy counties. Finally, seated to my far right is Karen West, the district's interim general counsel. Good morning. Following the consent agenda, our procedure is to address the remaining agenda items through four committees, resource management, finance outreach and planning, regulation, operations, lands, and resource monitoring. The governing board meeting is being recorded for broadcast and government access channels to ensure a high quality recording. Please remember to speak directly into the microphone. Also, the meeting is available for viewing via internet streaming. If you wish to address the governing board concerning any items listed on the agenda or any item that does not appear on the agenda, please fill out a speaker's card and submit it to Ms. Manuel. Your card will be provided to me or one of the committee chairs and we'll call you at the appropriate time during the meeting. Public input for issues not listed on the published agenda will be heard shortly after the meeting begins. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker. Three minutes. When appropriate, exceptions to the three-minute limit may be granted by a chair. If several individuals wish to speak on the same issue or topic, the designation of one person is recommended. Uh, please silence all cell phones at this time. Thank you very much. Now we have the opportunity to take the oath of office for newly appointed or reappointed board members. Mr. Simps, Mr. Maggart, Mr. Adams, Mr. Moran, and Mr. Armstrong, reappointed by Governor Scott on June 12th. Uh, please stand at your seat, and Ms. Martin will administer the oath. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear that you will honestly, faithfully, and impartially perform the duties devolving upon you in office as a member of the governing board of the Southwest Florida Water Management District to which you are appointed, and that you will not neglect any of the duties imposed upon you by Chapter 373 Florida Statute? I will. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, now we have a quorum again, and thank you very much for making it tight and close. That's, uh, that's good. We're, we're good. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we have an opportunity to uh, have additions or deletions uh, to the agenda. Mr. Beltran. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we do have a, a couple of additions and deletions to the agenda, and I have one change on the consent agenda from the recommendation. Uh, let me just run through that. Under Resource Management Committee Consent Agenda, Item 15, approval of land easement for the Pasco County Reclaimed Water Treatment Wetland and Aquifer Recharge Site 1 Project N666. Uh, this item is being deleted to allow more time for the development and completion of all the documents necessary for the approval and implementation of the project and to provide a more complete presentation to the Governing Board for its consideration prior to its action of the project. Another, the other change is item 33 on the regular agenda will be presented prior to item 32, uh, which is the legisl legislative budget and the recommended annual service budget. Legislative update will be presented first due to the state funding impacts that may affect 
the uh, <coughs> recommended annual service budget. And finally, Mr. Chair, under consent item number nine, uh, the recommendation stated in there has changed uh, since the preparation of the recap. The existing leasee declined the first right of refusal, and the award of the leasee is going to the highest bidder, which is different than the documents that were published. Those are all the changes I have to the agenda. Okay. Thank you very much. Does the board have any items uh, that need to be removed? Marted? Just clarify, Mr. Robert, on item number nine, are you deleting it then? No, we are not. It's just a change from the published recommendation. Okay. Thank so you. it still sits for approval under consent. Thank you. Yeah. If there are no other uh, changes, uh, there is good cause to amend the published agenda as allowed by section 120.525 <coughs> of the Florida statute. May I have a motion to approve the amended agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Carlos. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Nay. Aye. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, the public is given an opportunity to uh, comment on anything that's not listed on today's agenda. I do not have a blue card at this time or anything. So we're good to go and we can continue and proceed. Uh, before the board considers action on the consent agenda, I also have an opportunity to request any blue cards. I don't have any at this time. You still have done? So we're, we're good to go. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. <laughs> Carlos, we're going to have fun with you this morning oh, here, boy. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and release the, the gavel to um, Paul. I'd like to call the Natural Resources uh, Committee to order, and uh, the first item on the uh, agenda for us is uh, out of cycle. <laughs> Uh, funding for Timber Oaks. Uh, Mark Hammond, you. Oh, we're out the gate. Yeah, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, JP Marchand, our engineering manager, or the uh, bureau chief, uh, is going to be giving you an up overview of this. There is one change in the recommendation, and so uh, Mr. Marchand will, will walk you through that. We do have a number of uh, members of the public here to, to, that have filled out blue cards to speak on this project also. I have 10 blue cards, and I want to repeat what the chair said. I hope you have a spokesman, and we'll uh, try not to repeat comments. We want to hear everybody. We want your input, uh, but we would appreciate that as well. Staff report. Yes. Mr. Chairman, the members of the board, good morning. I'm J.P. Marshawn, Water Resource Bureau Chief. I'm here to talk about the Timber Oaks project this morning. Uh, this is an action item, but as Mark said, uh, we're actually recommending no action by the board this morning. I'll explain that. It is different from the recommendation that is in your packet, uh, but I will explain our recommendation of no action this morning as I go through the presentation. The project uh, that we're discussing is a stormwater retention facility project located in western Pasco County, just southwest of State Road 52 and Little Road. This is in a closed drainage basin, which means that there's no surface water outflow from this watershed. Uh, the water that falls in the area stays in the area until it either evaporates or percolates into the ground. There's a, been a history, long history of flooding problems in the area, both involving house and street flooding. Uh, this is consistent with the modeling that the county has done, the levels of flooding and frequency of flooding. In uh, the early 2000s, uh, the county recognized the problem in this area and designated the watershed as a drainage basin of special concern, which uh, increases the county's requirements uh, in terms of new development for protection of existing pro property. The funding request is to construct stormwater facilities at the old golf court site. It includes acquisition of the site and excavation for stormwater storage to store over 200 acre feet of runoff. The county is funding design. They want to use land as part of their match and uh, for the construction and district would be funding uh, construction of the project. The project as proposed does reduce house flooding in the area. Currently, this is a uh, graphic showing the existing 100-year floodplain in the area, there are about 80 homes that would have water in the homes in uh, this rain event under existing conditions. Under proposed conditions, the project does reduce uh, house flooding. 
Under proposed conditions, about 55 of those homes would no longer have water in the homes during the same event. There, that means there's still 25 that would have be subject to flooding in that event, although to a lesser degree than without the project. The project also reduces street flooding in the area. The graphic uh, uh, shows the, if the, the yellow and the blue together represent street flooding that occurs under existing conditions. The yellow is what would no longer flood after the project. Um, of, I think something to point out here, this intersection of Ponderosa and Ranch Road is one of the critical access points to the uh, subdivision, the area. And as you can see, there's still, flooding's been significantly reduced in the area, but there's still some flooding at the intersection. Under existing conditions, there's over two feet of flooding at the crown of the road in this area. Under the proposed conditions, it's down to uh, less than five inches. So while it's not passable under today's conditions, it would be passable after the project. Excuse me. So you're telling me the yellow is what the project will fix? Yes, sir. And it, but the blue is what's still going to flood? Yes, sir, but to a lesser extent than it had been before. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I, I want to talk for a minute about what was reviewed uh, at the subcommittee meetings in February and April of this year. Uh, the proposed CFI <coughs> project uh, was for $13.4 million approximately. It included, as I mentioned earlier, land and construction. Uh, district would be funding construction. County would use land as part of their match. Uh, total funding from the district and the county would both be about $6.7 million. The district has included just over $3 million in the FY16 budget. County's funding the design on the project, and at the time of the meetings earlier this year, the project was ranked medium, uh, pending a 30% plan completion by the county and a third-party review. The county's requesting an out-of-cycle request, that's what we're here for today, because they would like to get a formal final governing board approval of the funding of the project prior to them closing on the land acquisition. They want to have final approval uh, from the bo our board. Since this time, a lot of work's been done. Uh, the 30% plans were completed. The third party review was finished. Uh, some additional soils and environmental assessment recommendations came out of that. That work was all completed. The counties continued their public awareness and notification efforts. They've finished 60% plans. We've been able to review those as well. Alternative analyses were done. The county had previously done different alternative analyses. We also looked at an alternative of purchasing flood-prone homes as a different way to try and address the problem. As a result of all that, there's been no change in the proposed cost of the project. and. Uh, the benefit-cost ratio has been calculated for this project to be just over one. What that means is that the financial benefits of the project, financial measurement of benefits, the benefits are greater than the cost of the project. Um, uh, and, and basically, long story short, we believe that this project as proposed is the preferred uh, solution to the problem. Can you go back one slide for me? Yes, please? sir. The 30 percent that the county has spent to date, is it in the total cost? Is it in the 10.9? No, sir. County's funding <coughs> design, it is not in the uh, these figures. It's separate. You know what that 30 percent of that total then? Is that what they've spent oh. so far? Uh, no, I believe their cost has been it was in the six hundred seven hundred thousand dollar range for design, but they'll be able to speak to that. All right. Thank you. But it is not included in these numbers. The current status of the project, uh, as I said, the cost uh, has not changed. Um, the district has uh, approximately $3 million in the FY16 budget. Plan would be to, if we go forward with the project, to fund the rest of it in FY17. The county has identified $4.5 million approximately for the project, but have not yet identified the rest of their $6.7 million share. They have adopted a municipal services benefit unit ordinance to fund their portion of the project. A, a assessment hearing is scheduled on that for September of this year. 
and they are continuing to work on the design. They're working on the 90% plans at this point. So in conclusion, there is a significant flooding problem in the area. We believe it's appropriate for the district to help uh, address this. The proposed project is considered to be the preferred solution to the problem, uh, but the county has not identified their complete funding source to fund the current requested amount at this time. As a result, without complete county funding identified, staff does not recommend a final commitment by the board of the uh, district funds, hence our recommendation of no governing board action at this time. What, what that means is that the approximately $3 million would still remain in the FY16 budget, but we would need to come back to the board prior to enter into, enter into, <laughs> entering into any agreement with the county on the project. Uh, county is here, has a short presentation that uh, their consultant would like to make uh, explaining a little bit more about the benefits of the project and their plans from here. So, Robert? And I'll be available to answer questions. As I was going to ask if, well. if the board had any questions of uh, JP, or we'll go ahead and hear the county's presentation. Uh, uh, I'm me personally. We'll, we'll call you back if we have right. any more questions. Thanks. Robert, there you go. Good morning. My name is Robert Johnson. I'm with uh, URS AECOM. Uh, we're the design consultant for the county, and we'd like to just give you, go over a few things uh, with you, help maybe answer some questions. Uh, as JP mentioned, there has been significant flooding in Temper Oaks uh, for, many, for many years. Um, they've had major flooding events, uh, 1988, 93, 95, 98, 2004, and then especially in Tropical Storm Debbie in 2012. Uh, previous studies that have gone on by the county have recommended uh, and looked at different alternatives, and the one that was uh, recommended to go forward was the excavation <coughs> option of the golf course to provide additional storage to reduce the flooding uh, within the Timber Oaks area. Uh, the, the ponds we proposed uh, are going to be excavated at the golf course and provide about 200 acre feet of storage. That will help reduce the flooding for all events up to the 100 year uh, event. Uh, the facility would be uh, maintained in perpetuity by the county and provide uh, limited passive recreation uh, for the residents. Excuse me. You said <coughs> your one statement there, you believe that this will solve how much of the flooding? Uh, it'll reduce flooding up to the 100-year event. So do you agree with our staff on the 50 of the 80? 50 homes to the 80 homes? Yes, I mean, not, not everything will come out for the 100-year event, but uh, it will definitely reduce the amount of uh, impacted structures. And you all are good with the road flooding? Yes. Okay. So, uh, again, to go over some of the benefits, uh, there is going to be reduced flooding to the homes, um, reduced flooding to the common areas. Uh, right now, the, the clubhouse uh, area within Timber Oaks uh, floods during the major events. That flooding will be uh, reduced and also to the park areas uh, adjacent to the clubhouse. Uh, there's going to be less damage from high water uh, to water and sewer structures, um, patios, lawns, garages, improved safety uh, related to high water uh, for pets, children, and uh, other, other people, uh, better home accessibility and protection from insect infestation, uh, snakes, uh, <laughs> rodents, whatever, during high water periods. Um, also improved safety. Um, as JP mentioned, uh, the road flooding will be reduced. Uh, a lot of cases, um, uh, emergency access vehicles during uh, the high water are not able to get to different locations within Timber Oaks. This pond will help uh, reduce the flooding and allow access. And then also the, we feel the stormwater solution will help improve the overall property values uh, within Timber Oaks. So the current progress, um, one of the things the county's done to address the issue of the funding shortfall is to issue what they call a request for information. And basically, that's almost like a contractor bid. Uh, that went out last Friday. Um, it's going to be due on July 6th. And what they'll do is get prices in from contractors on uh, the different aspects of the project to be able to determine whether the project is going to be cost feasible. Um, so what they're going to do is review those um, quotes from the contractors and make sure that the project is feasible and that no land would be purchased until uh, they determine that uh, the project is cost feasible. And again, that's going to happen in the next uh, couple weeks. 
Uh, we've been working with uh, the Timber Oaks uh, Homeowner Association for uh, the last probably year, year and a half. Uh, they've been working on this project for many years. This is just a listing of some of the um, meetings, um, newspaper advertisements, uh, flyers, and everything that they've been working on just for the last year, uh, over 44 events, and then we've been, we've been meeting uh, several times in the last couple of months as the project has been progressing. So we do have a lot of public input, and uh, they've been to their uh, members within Timber Oaks, and uh, we do have a good uh, showing here today for the people that are in support of the project. So one of the things that makes this project a little different from some other cooperative projects is there's a lot of different players. Uh, the Timber Oaks <coughs> residents themselves are going to be contributing as part of the MSBU. Uh, they're going to be providing uh, funding um, out of their own pockets to help uh, make these improvements and to help uh, with the acquisition of the property. Pasco County has dedicated a lot of staff time and over $700,000 for design fees that are not part of the funding request. And then they're also going to be initially buying the property and then paying for future maintenance. And then, of course, uh, we look forward to receiving some matching funds from uh, SWIFTMUD to help, help with the project. So our request today is that we would still like to seek an out-of-cycle approval today. But we would like it could be contingent upon uh, that the county demonstrate that the project is cost feasible. In other words, when the RFI comes in, we will make sure we work with uh, staff to provide them all the information they need to make sure that the project could be constructed and that the county would have their uh, matching funds for the project. Thank you. Is, can you tell me when that MS, is the MSBU in place now? Has it been approved by the county? Uh, the first reading was approved. I believe the second reading is in September, David. County Attorney's Office. It's been approved. The final assessment will occur in September of this year. So you're just waiting on the finance estimate right now, but the well, MS... we're waiting on the, the cost estimates from cost the RFI. Estimate. Okay. But the MSBU has been approved. Uh, a follow-up question is, can you tell me when those homes were built that, uh, or the 50 that remain subject to flooding? Uh, the subdivision, I think, has been constructed since the 70s. 70s? Yes. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of situations like that all over the district where developments were built uh, with different standards uh, and different measurements. So, we have any questions from the board, Mr. Bell? Um, you know, JP was up here you know, just Chair. a few minutes ago and uh, kind of laid out the, uh, the cost of the project, and you believe that it will be around $13 million. Is that correct? Based on the slide we saw earlier? Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and based off of, you know, design and all the engineering you reviewed, do you agree with that number, or do you believe there's any opportunity for it to come in lower than that? Well, we're hoping with the RFI process that we'll get some uh, better prices, but, uh, yes, that's the cost we've been... 13 million? Okay. Mr. Chair. Paul, Carlos. Yeah. Well, who? Carlos. Carlos, the oh, question. Car Carlos, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your tone. You, you have a question? I do have a couple uh, question and a comment. Uh, can can you speak Marshawn. up a little bit louder so we can hear you real, real good? Or maybe we can turn the volume up. How's that? Is that better? Is that better? A, a little bit. I've got the handset, so I'm not on a speakerphone, so I don't know. And I'm on a landline. I'll He's ask sta staff to try line. to turn up the volume just a little. So we, we, we want to hear, and we want the uh, audience to hear your question, too. Sure. Great. Go ahead. Is, that, is it staff ready? Okay. Yes. My, my one question to JP is what in the after condition, what does this do to the FEMA floodplain in that area? The, I do, I don't off the top of my head recall um, what the current FEMA firm map shows in this area, but uh, uh, it would reduce the actual flood elevation. So if we, and, and we are in the process now of doing a watershed management plan. We just finished the uh, first phase of that, the watershed evaluation. The next phase would be the modeling for the entire uh, double hammock watershed of which this is a part. And that would serve to uh, identify FEMA floodplains. We would incorporate this project in there were it to move forward and it would end up with being a lower elevation than uh, without the project. 
Okay, so so the goal for the for, I, I'm watching you on video, but there's a 45 second delay between the phone and the video. <laughs> uh, for the I suspect the people in red shirts are representing this project that are in the audience, and so the benefit to them in the after condition should be a reduction in in flood insurance policies cost. That would also come out of this project. That's correct. Okay, and is that part of the agreement that we would be entering into Pasco County to formalize the map amendment changes to FEMA? Um, I think that would be part of our watershed management plan project on Double Hammock instead of on this particular project. And what is the timing of that? Would it, be coinc would it coincide with this? Uh, actually, our, we should be finishing up that modeling before before the construction is complete. We probably finish up the modeling about a year from now. Construction is supposed to be about two years. Uh, so it would coincide like that. We would be able to finish the modeling and the watershed management plan before construction. I think what we would want to do is uh, just coordinate the two so that we can include the finished project in the uh, floodplain delineation. <coughs> okay. So then my, my last comment is, will Pasco County agree to uh, either make some kind of arrangements if it goes over the budget that they're presenting to us today so that maybe the board would see it to move forward subject to and getting their funding agreement finalized in September? Pasco County attorney is coming forward, Carla. Well, ultimately, the county share is being, the construction share is being assessed. Design is separate. We're paying for design. The county's separately paying for design. But ultimately, the county's construction share is being funded through this MSBU. So I'm going to ask the attorney for uh, the residents to also speak to, to maybe answer that question better. So. Sure. Members, uh, Clark Hobby. Uh, I'm an attorney. Usually only represent landowners and developers, but because of this special situation and we felt such a need with this association because of the road flooding, uh, my firm's been helping for about five or six years to get to this point. But the whole point of this process, and I know some of the uh, governing board members have concerns, and staff does too here at the district, about the cap on the cost. That's really what I think the staff's concern and, the, and uh, perhaps some of the governing board members share that concern. I want you all to understand what's happening on the county side is that my clients are going to be assessed the full cost of the county's portion. So we're watching this like a hawk and we are the ones who asked for this RFI process to occur so we know what the cost would be. We don't have any problem with uh, a conditional approval today saying that if the number exceeds nine million on a total cost that we would come back to the governing board for that reason because we're going to have to have internal meetings if that were to occur about how we're going to bridge the gap as well so we have no problem with that and i just wanted you all to know that this is a critical project but we're also watching the cost like a hawk Thanks. Yeah. okay thank you thank you Mr. Uh, Mr. The I want to make two quick comments on the costs. Um, yes, that was the cost estimate that our engineer agreed with, but it does have a 20% contingency built into it, and it does not assume any credit for the sale of the fill dirt. And that's something that we intend to get more details on as we go through this RFI process. So that's the reason we're optimistic that the costs will come down to the $9 million range. But we'll know that after July 6th. Ms. Griffin has a question. I'm not sure if it's to the county attorney. I, I think he just answered my question. I wanted to find out what the uh, final results were from your phase one, phase two testing. Um, what would the fill be suitable for and whether you had used that in your original calculations? I'm going to let Robert address that question. But the answer is, the, the general answer is that part of the fill we believe is suitable for sale. Um, there's a part that may or may not be suitable for sale, but I'll let Robert address those specific quantities. Yes, we've uh, done numerous soil sampling and groundwater sampling at the site, and there are uh, areas of the site that will have to be remediated, and, and most of that material will be taken off site. It's probably maybe 30% of the total excavation volume that we're talking about. So there is still uh, 
be over uh, 300,000 yards that'll be able to be available for sale. That's a good clean material. So there'll be a, a potential benefit of that sale. We're just not sure how much that'll be at this time. Does that satisfy your question? Any other questions? I've got about a comment, but I want I got about a dozen questions, but I uh, want the public. I want to hear the public. Uh, who, who do you want to address those to? Pardon? What's no, I want, the, I want the public to, to oh, comment. Right I've got a dozen questions after I hear the public, but I, thought it was I want them to go first. Questions for presenters. If there are no more comments or questions from the board, we'll start with the, the blue cards. Uh, Joyce, is it Gallagher? Sitting right up front. Welcome to our board meeting. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Joyce Gallagher. I am the president of TAXA. Uh, you see here we have an enthusiastic group of people. They have been somewhat alarmed by the suggestion at one time that there might be the removal of some homes. Obviously, that's a traumatic experience. I have lived uh, in this community since uh, 1993. My home, I was informed, was one of those in 1988 that was flooded. I happen to live on what is called a lake, but it really is similar to a pond. Um, I was president previously, and at that time in 2002, flooding was a very critical and serious issue. The vice president and I wandered around in boots for days trying to uh, help the citizens of uh, the uh, community. Uh, we see this as, as uh, a necessity. We see this as important to uh, the preservation of our homes as well as the value of, uh, of the property. You will note we probably have approximately, what, 50, 100 people here. Obviously, uh, they are uh, concerned. We hope that you will consider the uh, endowment of us <laughs> with funds. Uh, and we will be working with the county and Pacer Corporation to uh, complete this project. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gallagher. I have a question. Uh, there's a question for you. I noticed, I noticed when the comment was made about reduced homeowners insurance, you kind of we have not had any I information. I know what that, what that reaction was. Well, we have not had any information as related to that, although we're in a closed basin. We are not uh, apparently by government regulation considered uh, a flood zone, which lacks in logic to me somehow. Uh, but has there been any discussion of insurance? Uh, no. Okay, so I'm sure the county may answer that. Oh, but that so that was an assumption on the right. presenter's part. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any yeah. further questions? I don't think so. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, next card is for Clark Hobby. We've met Mr. Hobby, and you apparently are representing quite a few of the folks here with red shirts on. Yes, sir, and, and I'll keep this brief. Um, appreciate the opportunity to uh, be here today with you all, but... Yes, in the previous meetings, just to give you all a sense of these things, we've had numerous hearings before the county commission on a variety of things related to this the last four or five years. It, on average, we probably had three or 400 residents out at every hearing. This is a serious, serious issue that affects basic public health and safety. It's not about individualized houses flooding. It's there are streets in there when we had the flooding in 2012 that became impassable for three four weeks at a time and at the time that was occurring the association the flooding's been so persistent and pervasive over the last 20 25 years that the association has invested big time money in its own pumping system and has to continuously run these pumps just to after a month or six weeks get the water off of the streets it's not about houses. This is about major intersections and streets flooding, so we can't even get emergency services into these folks. And that's really why I'm here today. Um, the county has been a big help on this process. Um, and, and as you've already heard, we've been working um, since we came to this mediated settlement with the seller to help us buy the property. We've been working on this for a year already. And we have hundreds and hundreds of hours into the pond design. We've approved a haul route through the county that will help the ultimate bidder take the excess fill out that we hope will offset the cost 
of the project because there's a lot of development in the area and there's a real need for the fill. So that's a big part of what we're hoping to do here. But we've worked very hard to get to this point. Um, and we've, we've taken care of a lot of what have been major issues going forward to make this as seamless as possible. Um, I wanted to let you know, you may hear from a representative of a sub association in the community called Spanish Gate that is opposed to the whole project. They basically, from what we can tell, don't want to pay for any port, uh, part of the assessment that's going to be coming their way. They represent about 3.5% of the total homes in the association. So it's a very small association, and we believe that they are benefited by the MSBU. But as I said before, we are watching the costs on this like a hawk, so we really view ourselves as partners with the district on this. Uh, it's very important to each homeowner that we don't exceed the budget that we've created, which for your benefit comes out to a hundred, a cap of $112 per household per year. That's how, if you back in using the county's assessment methodology, how we get to the four and a half million dollars. So we're well aware of that, and, and as you can see, we've worked so hard to get to this point. We're just hopeful you all will approve this today. And if you want to make it contingent upon us demonstrating financial viability with our uh, <coughs> self-imposed cap, we're fine with that. But we would ask for the district support today. And I can answer any questions you may Mr. Maggard, I believe you had a question. Mr. Hobby, thanks for coming. Um, is there any, this is a, 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 a fairly large project at 13 million, is there, is there been any thought to the 25 homes that are left out? Because we're gonna do 55 of the 80, apparently it's gonna be fixed the way I understand it. There's 25 people are still gonna be flooded. Is that a correct statement, Mr. Hammond? Yeah. Okay, is there any, give or take, any thought to those folks? Not, not really, because that really hasn't been the overarching intent of this project. This again, this back is back to the roads. Right. This is about to fix and make passable roads in the area and to reduce some community-wide flooding that occurs on common areas. One of the comments made was the flooding would be reduced for those 25, but uh, how significant they were hit before, we don't know, and how well, much it's reduced. We, we act 90 percent reduced that that's our, than our engineers can comment further but there have been three different engineering companies that have run models that show you the extent of reduction of the flooding there's one uh, really bad intersection that we're not going to totally eliminate the flooding on and everyone's acknowledged that but the flooding stages and the volume of the flooding is going to be so substantially reduced that we believe the road will be passable basically the elevation of this one intersection is it's very problematic and the only real way to fix it is to basically reconstruct the roadway system so we're doing the best we can with creating these gigantic ponds to get the water where it should have been going all along okay thank Any you for the questions mr Mayden? i'm good right yes now. sir yeah i've got a couple of, uh the sub association presented to us in april they're they're uh concerns about having to pay for something that doesn't affect them you just described that as being three percent question I've got relates to the emergency services are they not affected by ingress and egress to their community either no they are and that's why we're we're in court with them right now over this and, and we don't believe that they have a meritorious claim uh, they are clearly substantially benefited and when the boundaries of the MSBU were, were drawn um, really by uh, Robert's engineering firm. They went through all of the individualized improvements and looked at things as a whole also to make sure that there was the proper nexus and benefit for every part of the, uh, the basin that was included. Okay. And my other question is probably the, the one that's on everybody's mind and that's the 800 pound gorilla. It's all about money. Right. Show me the money. And the way I see it now, it seems like everything we've heard and what's been discussed with staff is we're hoping that the project comes in for less. But my point is, based on current assessments, I think you said $112 per resident per right. year. If, if we don't have any savings at all and the project comes in at what is shown on paper today, the assessment is going to be $180 a person. It's 50% more right. to cover that extra... And I guess everybody knows that, and that's uh, because I hate to I hate to see something get ginned up to a point where people feel like, all right, we knew what our number is, and just like we've been surprised 
right. negatively at this board right. with things running way over. Do the residents understand that if we were to do a contingent approval on our half, that they might be faced with that kind of charge? Well, we certainly understand that. And, and I would say to all of the board members, we believe that what is going out in this RFI is a worst case scenario. Uh, we believe that what's likely to happen is some of the soils uh, may ultimately be found to be usable uh, and it may provide a much larger <coughs> benefit to some of the bidders. Uh, I'll, I'll give you all a little bit of a sense of, the, uh, of this issue. Uh, there are no dirt mines or fill sources within about 10 or 15 miles of this area on Little Road, and we have enormous construction projects about three miles away on 54 and Little, and several planned there. And the uh, guys who do the site development work that we work with with all of our developments are literally lusting after this fill source. We need to do a little bit more work with uh, DEP to try to get us maybe another 200,000 that would be usable out of this, but we feel like what you're seeing is a worst case scenario and that the cost may go down another million, million and a half when we get to that point with DEP. We just need a couple of week, uh, months to get there. Cost going down because they can sell the fill? Yes, sir. We, we, we basically had to tell the uh, people in the RFI that there's some amount of fill that right now we're not sure that you'll be able to use it for your lots. You may be able to use it for commercial applications, which would be road bases and maybe on commercial sites. But the more info and the time we have to deal with DEP, that could open up the use of the fill. So they've had to assume that, you know, there's about 200,000 that they have to haul off that might not be usable for some applications. Yeah, I think the testimony we heard earlier was maybe like 300,000 300, yards. Three, right. So it Two dollars, three dollars a yard. I mean, there's, there's where your number is. That's right. Yeah. Mr. Babb, you had a yeah, question. I, I do, and, and um, yeah, I wanted to wait and have my comments until we've heard everybody. But I wanted this opportunity to piggyback off of um, Mr. Dunbar's, you know, comments. Uh, you know, I've had the pleasure of, of of speaking to several of the residents and getting letters from a lot of the residents, uh, both on those who want to, you know, fund the opportunity to those who say don't, you know, pay for a dime and and. Um, but it's very obvious that something needs to be done, and these residents have a flooding issue, and this needs to be resolved. Um, I'm speaking as an individual, you know, board member. My, my problem with this is I don't want to see a subpar project occur. And if we've been told by all engineers that this is going to be a $13 million project, that's that's the number, and we're being asked to put up half of the money, you know, for a $13 million project, mm -hmm. and so far only $9 million is available, you know, to move forward uh, based off of you know, what is willing to done. If what the residents and or PASCOs want to say, hey, hey listen, um, you know, we understand that uh, ifs, you know, occur, and if we come in less, then so be it, and then it's going to be only a $9 million project, congratulations, and that's, that's wonderful, and we don't spend the money. But if we have to spend $13 million, I do not want to find this district in a situation where now we've bought land that we can't do the project that's beneficial to these residents and or situation where we develop a subpar project. Um, if, if this thing is going to be done, it's going to be done right. right. And so with that being said, if there's a guarantee amongst either PASCO or the residents to say, hey, if this is going to cost $13 million, we're willing to pay $13 million. If that goes along with our approval, then uh, as a board member, I'm willing to move forward. Mr. Chairman, I can tell you unequivocally, we are not going to, the county's not going to, I can't speak for the county except to say that since their funding goes through the assessment uh, that comes back to my clients, we are not going to pursue closing on this property until we know what the costs are and that they're in line with our expectations. It is not going to happen. I mean, if we can get sued by the seller to live a long day, it ain't going to happen. Great. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Now, I just want to piggyback on the piggyback, really. Um, <laughs> uh, that really is the nuts and bolts of why this discussion has happened and why, the, why this board or this individual, and I think there's two now, that agree at the end of the day, we understand we've been down this road before with projects. We're figuring 13 million, that's what we're figuring. Matter of fact, we can figure 13 million maybe plus. Right. In the back of our minds, we, know, we understand that because we do this quite often. But at the end of the day, I agree with the chairman. It's a project, we got a flood in issue and needs to be, the people need to be taken care of. But I wanna make sure we're doing the right project. I wanna make sure is, you know, and staff's convinced me that what we're going to do is going to be a, a major help to this. 
But at the end of the day, we have a, you know, it gets back to what Mr. Dunbar said. We got a funding issue here. Right. And we, and I agree with the chairman, we don't ever want to put the district in a position where there's a no return here. And that's my concern. If there's, and I don't have a problem, if there, you know, the, 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 we have the money set here. So we're, we're going to be committed until something goes south. Right. So I, I don't want to appear that I, this board member believes that. But I guess the question is for us to decide is if we vote on something conditional or not vote on it, does it really change? Because we still have the money there. If we vote, not, you know what I mean? So I guess that's really the question I've got to come up with. But I do believe, and I agree with um, the other two board members, we need to do something. Um, I think we're committed. I believe this, this board member is committed to this project and want to see it through, but also the devils are in the detail. That, well, Mr. Maggard, to, to your point and, and to Mr. Babb's point, I totally understand where you all are coming from, and that's why I think we were fine with the conditional approval. And, um, you know, if the board, and I know we haven't taken all the public testimony and, and there may be other questions, but... You know, we, we are fine with a conditional approval, and it could even include something saying if you exceed the, the $9 million number that, you know, we'd have to find either alternative funding or come up with a plan and come back to the governing board. We, I don't, I mean, I, I would like to get the county to weigh in, but from our perspective, I don't think we'd have a problem with that. Well, thanks for the segue. I mean, this might be a question for you, um, Mr. Hobby, or, or David Goldstein. Why, why now? You know, so we're here, you know, looking at this opportunity. Why not come back to us in September and say, okay, hey, listen, here's, here's what, what's going to, uh, to happen, and let's move forward. Question. Well, I think the obvious answer is we don't want to have to bring these residents to every single governing. I mean, this is a long way for them to travel. There's a lot of them here. Um, I think they're looking for an approval sooner rather than later. And, you know, we have a, we're spending a lot of money on design on this project without any firm commitment from the governing board. We spent over 700000 already, uh, probably be a million dollars in design by the time we're done. Um, the sellers are, are waiting on some answer about this is a contingent, this is a contingency in our purchase contract that we get swift my governing board approval. So honestly, though, the biggest reason is we don't want to have to bring these residents to every single, you know, they need an answer at some point as to whether the governing board supports this project or not. So I think that's probably the biggest reason. Mr. Adams, go ahead. From this board member's perspective, uh, you know, some of us are getting a little older in our years, but our memory, I can promise you, is good enough that I see a lot of red out here today, and I don't need for them to have to make that trip again in the future for me to remember that they were here supporting it. We've heard enough about this project that through the years that, that it's a serious problem. I'll go along with the chairman on, I have concerns, not only for the district, but, but I'll also say for the, uh, for the residents that $9 million, if that's what has been approved and, and you all come up with, that's the number you can get it done, it's get it done right though for $9 million. If it takes more than we need to be seeing more and just because I give a conditional vote today for approval of the spending at a $9 million mark when we're thinking it's 13, uh, I've got concerns on, on what I've promised these residents because from the district standpoint, I wanna make sure that if we spend, as the chairman indicated, we spend, we commit any money, it's to do it right. It needs to be fixed. That, I think, all of your residents uh, have heard uh, from the entire board that, that things need to be done correctly, but I'm at a little bit of a loss as to what uh, any conditional approval is other than potentially exposing us to being committed to uh, a project that's done halfway maybe by the end of it if, if the numbers don't come back right or the, the residents have to be voting on uh, whether they're going to approve doing it in a certain way. And I'd prefer from a district standpoint that we don't make that commitment. I want to commit to these uh, residents that it gets done and it gets done correctly and that there's value to their dollars and value to our dollars. Uh, so that would be my concern. Let me just elaborate a little bit because, you know, 
as Mr. Hobby said, there's a few residents here that don't like the project. It's, it's normally it's, it's mostly the Spanish Gate Village. So the problem is that every time this comes up for a, a governing board vote, they feel like they need to have all these people here to counter that opposition. I'm just being honest with you. So mm -hmm. that's that's the real concern. And you know, if we had a strong statement from the governing board saying we support this project, even though there's some people that don't like it. Um, that would go a long way to, I think, addressing their concerns, even if we ultimately take the formal vote at a later date. Okay. One of our core missions Mr. is flood Mr. control. Chair. That, who was that? That's Carlos. That's Carlos. Carlos, Carlos <laughs> I, I was just going to make a comment. One of our core missions is flood control, and we take that very seriously. So uh, you, you can rest assured. I, I've heard no other alternatives, and this problem needs to be solved. So I've heard nothing but positives from this board, and I would agree with uh, Mr. Adams as far as the residents can take it to the bank. Something's going to be done to correct the flooding in that area. It needs to be done. Uh, Carlos, you had a question? I, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's not a question. It's a comment. I'd like to to support the chair, Mr. Babb and Mr. Graves and their comment, and, and Mr. Adams and their comments. Uh, simply, everybody has stepped up to the plate. The homeowners themselves have put together an organization to fund their piece. We need to just move forward, and 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 in my opinion, uh, I move to make a motion to approve a conditional commitment subject to their budget to move forward with this project. Be before the chair recognizes your motion, I, I would like to suggest we give the other seven blue cards <coughs> an opportunity to speak. Uh, if I if I okay. could, Mr. Baruf, do you mind if I do that? No, Mr. Chairman, as you please. All right. The next speaker, uh, and with all of that conversation as background, I hope the residents background. are comfortable uh, and, and will be brief because we've you've heard a lot of discussion maybe on some of the points you wanted to make. But Eileen Dunn is the next speaker and followed by Nancy Jenkins. Not wearing a red Eileen Dunn, uh, Mira Vista Drive. Um, I've been in that community for a number of years now, and uh, one of the major problems is the street flooding, uh, being able to get in and out of the community. Uh, there's only a small group of people here today. We have a lot of older people that they're not going to drive more than a mile. And we have a lot of people that when the streets flood like that, the big concern is getting emergency help. I mean, the rescue people are in and out of that neighborhood probably the way the ice cream man used to come around <laughs> when we were kids, you know? And you're sitting there and you gotta worry about chest pain and things like that. And when it rains like that, you're, you're gonna be worrying about having a heart attack and you don't know if some, when you dial 911 whether you're gonna get somebody to help you or not. Uh, this plan here would probably be a big relief for a lot of people living there. And I think that's why many of them are willing to go along with the $112. <laughs> now, not everybody's happy about that. Some people don't want to pay it. Some people figure, oh, it doesn't matter. We'll be dead before we have to finish paying it. <laughs> you know, and then there's the newer people. They're going to live long enough maybe to pay it. But uh, it certainly is a well thought out plan, and I think it deserves the support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. Nancy Jenkins. Jenkins. Hello, Nancy Jenkins, and thank you for your time today. A lot has been said about the benefits of the project, and we're very excited that the board is in support of it. And a couple of things is when you talk about the 13 versus you can't hear me? No. Now? That's a little better, yeah. Now? I know I'm so tall, it's hard to. Um, so for the 13 million versus the 9 million, I just wanted to point out that the 13 million is an engineering estimate, an engineering estimate versus a procurement estimate. Oftentimes there's a big difference in those. And there is this, again, the credit for the fill, I wanted to repeat that. That is not in any of the numbers for the 13, the credit for any of that fill and the 20% contingency. So we think that that $9 million is going to be very achievable. I wanted to point that out. And I was very happy to hear that you can see the amount of cooperation with all the agencies here. 
you know, the residents are pitching in, the county's pitching in, Swift Mud, we've got a, a break from the tax collector on the assessment of the MSBU as well. So this is truly a public safety issue and all agencies are working together and we're happy about that. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ken DeGenero. Good morning. I have a, uh, some exhibits up here. Mr. De, Mr. De Gennaro, yes, your, sir. your card says, are you representing Spanish Gate Group? Spanish Gate, yes. I'm the vice president of the HOA. All right. Thank you. I just wanted you to identify that. Okay. Thank you. Um, a, lot has, a lot has been said here and inferred about Spanish Gate's position. And quite frankly, uh, Spanish Gate believes that we will receive no benefit from this flood retention project, drainage project, whatever you want to call it. Um, we would like to see everything fixed. And, but there are some facts that you should know. For one thing, when you talk about funding, you have to understand that uh, the county agreed to purchase the golf course for $2.5 million. Then he turned around and asked the state for the $2.5 million to help them with that purchase. Aside from that, um, they've asked Swift Mud for their uh, projected funding, which you agreed to $6.7 million in, in future funding. And then they turn around and they create an assessment, an MSBU program, to, to, to assess 100% of the community for the benefit of only 6% of the area. So we've been approached by the uh, sellers of the golf course. They've asked us to uh, pull our lawsuit so that the funding could be released. And we said, you know, if the county takes Spanish Gate out of the, out of the MSBU, and if the county guarantees no contamination of our wells, the non-potable wells in Timber Oaks, and the potable and non-potable wells in the residential communities that surround Timber Oaks, we'd be happy to withdraw our, our, our litigation. Uh, Spanish Gate does not flood. As a matter of fact, uh, someone talked about FEMA. Spanish Gate currently enjoys a low to moderate uh, FEMA flood rating, which is superior to any drainage plan that has ever been proposed. Also, uh, there are communities adjacent to Timber Oaks who would benefit, but are not part of this MSBU. This exhibit shows the Spanish Gate wells, and we have a lot of concern about the potential of contamination to the aquifer that would definitely contaminate our wells. So the big yellow dots there are the Spanish Gate wells. Um, the area in the hatched, in, in the red hatching, shows a projected path of the aquifer and the potential contaminated areas. This exhibit is an expanded view showing how the water flows in the aquifer north by northwest and will affect not only the Spanish Gate but all of Timber Oaks. In this exhibit shows the existing conditions of Dollar Lake, which is a collapsed sinkhole. Now, no one's talked about sinkholes, but our position is why be pumping water from proposed ponds, existing lakes, into a collapsed sinkhole? Why aggravate a potential situation that could cause more sinkholes in this development? If you see the inflow structures, there's a lot of water that flows into to Dollar Lake. We even have signs here when I first came into this community. I couldn't figure out what these signs were there for. But the first sign says, private property, no trespassing, no fishing, no swimming. Okay? Signage to discourage access. The second sign says, area being watered with effluent water. Now we all know what effluent water is. And the, and, and, and the last sign says, nature park, for use by Timber Oaks residents only. And the problem is that all of this, all of these issues surrounding this project and Dollar Lake and pumping water from here to there is, is clearly outlined in the Clean Water Act of 2015, which we have excerpts here on this drawing. 
also the EPA has, a, has an enforcement initiative regarding effluent water. At that, um, I'd just like to say that, once again, you know, what you're contributing to is an MSBU assessment of 100 percent of our community that affects only a very small percentage of people. Six percent of the people that live in Timber Oaks will be benefited by this project. Spanish Gate will not. And my president would like to come up and give a few words. Did, did he fill out a card? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, and your name, sir? Yes, my name is Larry Dawkins, 11400. Uh, okay, thank you, Larry. That, that was a card. I couldn't, I couldn't read that one, so I, you helped and, me. Uh, you helped me. Thanks. Just a few words about Dollar Lake, because that's one of the major issues we have here. Buried within this whole scope, the original project, they said that they were going to stop the pumping of untreated stormwater into a, an, a, a different basin. See, the trouble is it's this basin of great concern. It's really a, a, a hodgepodge of about 31 different basins. You're only addressing one or two of those basins today in this project. There's more water that's got to be pumped into this to clear this whole mess up. It's not going to make that, that, that sea of blue turn into a sea of, of green just by doing this one project. Far from it. In fact, the only way this project works, if you look back at the original proposal, the Pasco engineering must, must now realize that the 2006 Professional Engineering Consultant Group study conclusion was correct. Evacuation in ponds alone will not contain enough storage water for a 100-year flood event. The PEC recommended pumping to Hope Bayou, not the Dollar Lake sinkhole. The current design is contrary to the Pasco original pledge to stop the pumping of waste into the sinkhole. Now they're saying that only when the storm events occur, or only when the lake levels get high, will they continue to pump into the sinkhole. Now, we're not aware of any binding agreement that Tosca has with Pasco County, well, Pasco County and, and Tim Brooks to use the sinkhole. We're not a real, we don't know of any agreements that they've worked out with EPA or any other agency to allow the pumping there. But it's just assumed that that'll happen. But only when it gets bad. And we have all the people who live to the west of us and northwest of us, some who have irrigation wells like we do, many others that rely upon this as a potable water supply for their household use. Is it more important to eliminate uh, detours in Timber Oaks, or is it more important not to, not to poison or make the people downstream of this, this project ill. I mean, these, these, these really should be considered. It's ecological, not monetary. Really, if the ecological and health issues raised, well, don't move, you just reject this proposal. If not, please judge it solely on harsh economic realities. Now, our attorneys looked at this plan as submitted with the county before. We have a little bit different numbers. It said only 133 homes of 1900 structures, 1990 structures in Timber Oaks are projected to flood in a 100 year flood event. If the proposed retention project is fully successful, only 56 homes would be saved. That leaves 77 homes that will still flood. Something's changed the last few months. They got better by themselves. You know, got fewer of them to deal with now. With a total cost of just over 15 million, again, the numbers have changed. That's about $250,000 for each house that's not flooded. This does not make economic sense. And how do you explain this to the 77 homeowners who would be taxed for the project but still flooded? We don't really mind paying our fair share. If this uh, MSBU had said the parties that are affected would pay a share equal to their benefit, we would pay a benefit directly to Tim Rokes. We have no problem with that, paying our fair share to maintain the clubhouse. So what we know so far about the clubhouse flooding, the clubhouse is flooded from water going across the road and entering the floodhouse above the lake level. The lake level at Timber, at Footprint Lake, has never risen in the floodhouse, and into the, in the, in the clubhouse. So if it was a FEMA pay payoff for it, they wouldn't pay a nickel either because the water's not coming in from the lake, it's coming in from water running to the lake or rain, rain coming down. Whole different situation. So really, at this point, I think you're right. Do a project that fixes the problem. I know they've got projects planned on, on Ranch Road. They have this uh, aquifer plant, down, uh, water plant down there. There's a sewage uh, treatment plant, both of which are going to require work. And they can run a pipeline down the entire thing, take the whole district in that's really flooding, clean up the whole problem, not just a piece of it. So they don't have to come back to you in two or three years and say, we have another 15, 20 million project. Go back to the first time we showed the large map where the whole basin is. How does it strain the whole basin? It only basin, a small portion. If you put this uh, MSBU area in there, it's just a small sliver of that. So we don't want to bear the brunt of the start of the buff of the whole thing. It's still not seeing the job done right. Any questions or? Any questions from the board? I really have one from Mr. Hammond. When I read this report from them, there's a lot, it says a lot of potential 
contamination, potential this, potential that. I assume we have looked at all of this. Well, we don't know what the potential contaminations are in an area. Yeah, but I'm asking our, <coughs> science. I'm asking our scientists. So when, I, I, when I read the word potentials and everything. Let, let me release him then. If there are no, yeah. no further questions, uh, yeah, Lawrence, gonna, thank you. Uh, but we, we'll, you. if we have any more, we'll call it. Mr. Hammond, do you want to give staff's comment to Mr. Maggard's question? Yeah, again, as a county, and again, for the record, my name is Mark Hammond, Division Director for uh, Resource Management. And um, the county has done the, the testing on there to characterize where those soils are that are contaminated and to what extent. Right now, the proposal is to haul those materials off. Um, they would continue to work with DEP in terms of other alternatives, but again, it would be so that those, that, that any, those issues would be addressed. And, and we're comfortable feel, with that. Staff feels comfortable with that? Yes. Thank you. Uh, has staff identified, uh, is it necessary to go through any road intersections that were previously flooded in order to get to Spanish Gate? <laughs> Let the county folks. Excuse me. If you look at, if you look at Highway 52, where it intersects Palm and the 100 year flood, we are the only that has access in and out of their basket flood road. Thank you, sir. County attorney. Yeah, there is a, and they do need to travel through Ranch Road and Ponderosa. They have another way out, admittedly, but we think that to get to US 19, they need to travel through that intersection. Does that answer your question? I, I, that was my question. Because the comment get was to made, US 19, that, they comment was made that, that, that would, it would allow uh, surface <laughs> travel. Uh, in other words, the <coughs> would not be underwater, but so they would have access. They do access, they have access to the Ponderosa and Ranch Road intersection, which is one of the intersections that flood. Now, what Spanish Gate will argue to you is they have another way in and out. But our position is, legal position is, that's a far more circuitous route to get to where they need to go. But I want to be clear that Spanish Gate keeps focusing on the road access as, the, as their that's they're saying they don't benefit from the increase the better road accessibility what they're ignoring is that they have they they have access to the clubhouse they have access to the common areas in, in timber oaks they have access to the parks and those as the signs say those are exclusively for the timber oaks residents spanish gate is part of timber oaks i know they want to act like they're not okay they're standing here saying oh we're not really part of timber oaks they pay the same assessments for pumping today that all the other residents in timber oaks pay so they're paying right now to alleviate this problem. They're paying for the pumping that's occurring. That answers my question. Any other comments or questions from the board? No. Are we ready for Mr. LaRouche? Uh, Is that done? Uh, no, we've got two, a couple more. I'm sorry. This, Mr. Stoddard Pickle? Pickle? Like. Just a <laughs> All right. Mr. Murphy is next. Wayne Murphy. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Stoddard Pickrell. I'm a professional geologist. Just a little bit about my background. I work for the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services in their soil and water program. Uh, later, I was the state hydrologist for pesticide programs for the Florida Department of Environmental Regulation. And I've been a consultant for the last 26 years and currently working on the DeLand Golf Course and the Indigo Lakes Golf Course along with the Timber Oaks Golf Course. Um, You've heard a little bit about soil sampling that's been done on this uh, property. Uh, soils on this property are no different than you see other places in Pasco County. There are very low levels of arsenics, and they, they are slightly above residential levels. But once they are appropriately managed, uh, FDEP should have no um, uh, uh, concern about the remaining soils left on the property. As mentioned earlier, there's been over 700, 770 samples collected. Only 600 have detections of arsenic. Uh, the golf course has been out of operation since 2007, and the golf course managers have told me that they have not applied any agricultural chemicals since uh, 1998. Um, in essence, there will be no soils left on the property uh, that will exceed any concern for any agency, EPA, uh, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, or the Florida Department of Health. Are there any questions? Thank you, sir. Any questions from the board? 
Thank you. Mr. Murphy, Wayne Murphy. Good morning. My name is Wayne Michael Murphy. I live at 8520 Windingwood Drive. Uh, I am a member of the Timber Oaks Board, but as the gentleman uh, just stood here, I'll give you a little bit about my background. I retired as a lieutenant colonel from the Newport Naval War College, and I was in charge of the emergency services there. What does that mean? My background for over 10 and a half years was involved in things similar to what you were doing. I applaud this board for giving great consideration, Mr. Dunbar, Mr. Adams, for thinking outside the box to make sure, as your chairperson here has said, that you do it and do it right. So I guess I'm here to ask you to dig deeper if you have to, because we really need your help. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, John, is it C-A? How do you pronounce it, sir? John Cadjo. Uh, I'm Thank chairman you. of the Stormwater Committee at Timber Oaks and a resident there. Uh, the committee rises in support of the project uh, uh, that was presented to you. And I would just like to make one comment on Dollar Lake. This project, the way it was engineered, I was assured by our engineers, would greatly reduce our pumping to Dollar Lake if it was approved. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and we appreciate your comments. And uh, final card is Chuck Novak. My name is Chuck Novak, and I live on Sand Trap, and I am one of the uh, newer residents to the area. And I have to say, a lot of my questions I sat here and came in with today were pretty much answered. I, mean, I guess one I have left is, how did we allow somebody in 1970s or thereabouts to build a project of this size and not account for all this water and flooding? And now, uh, 40 years later, we're going to turn around and ask the residents of Timber Oaks and other places to fund the, um, the construction of something that's supposed to remedy this situation. As I listen to all my neighbors talk too, um, I think that something that needs to be considered is not just the cost in this in terms of the money, but the human lives that are involved here as well. I hear them talk a lot about the fact that uh, emergency vehicles can't get in. And what I've seen from some of my new neighbors is, in case something seriously happens, not only can't people get in, but given their mobility and lack of it, so many of them would have a hard time just getting out, even on foot. But thanks for your time today, and I good luck in making the right decision. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Novak. We appreciate your input. Uh, <coughs> that's all the blue cards that I had. Uh, did someone else fill one and was not called? Yes, sir, if you'll come and give your name. <coughs> but I, I, My name is Ron Weislick, and I did sign a blue card. I may, I may have missed it, but let me. We, we need you to fill out another one, and not until after you finish, but. Uh, no. I don't see Ron, I think oh, I. Oh, wait, wait. wait. Yes, it was. It was uh, uh, Ronald Weislick. Right. That's it. Got you. Uh, you. You don't have to repeat the paper. <laughs> you got a good executive over there helping you yeah. out. That's good stuff. I just want to say that uh, everybody in Timber Oaks agrees to the, the, the same thing, that we agree to live by the, the uh, covenants and so forth, the documents of our community, and we don't single out. Uh, Spanish Gate, I, I'm not sure if there's like 69, 72, or 79 homes, but it's a small percentage of timber oaks. Now, if, if they say, we don't want to pay for that, well, what, the rest of us are all saying, I'm not getting any benefit of this uh, water th problem. The only thing that I get out of it, I have a way out if we have water. But I've agreed to pay for anything that this uh, community 
has to come up to spend. And to eliminate myself, pretty soon, if this goes through and somebody says, well, Spanish Gate don't have to sign and don't have to pay, what's going to happen when we have to repair the clubhouse and people say, geez, I don't go to the clubhouse, I don't want to have to pay. So it all boils down to, if you're in that community, you're in that community, the good and the bad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron, and uh, I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody else. We appreciate your taking the time to come, and I think that covers everyone. Now we're into board discussion, and uh, if we need some discussion, uh, if you'll raise your hand, I'll call on you. However, Mr. Baru, if you had a motion you wanted to make a little earlier. Yes, my motion is in support of moving forward contingent on the finalization of the budget and their funding in accordance with what we currently have in front of us. Second. We have a motion and a second to move forward contingent upon the funding. Is that confirmation from Pasco County regarding the funding? That's a question, Mr. Yes. Uh, yes. Any questions on, on the motion? Yes. No. Yeah, no. We, we did have a couple no, of questions. No, we have questions. Well, we aren't, we're clear on what he's moved, but we... What, what he's moving, but we have a motion, and we're under discussion on the motion. Discussion on the motion? I think we have Mr. Dunbar, and it kind of... Yeah. And then down here. Quite a few. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I sense the comments that you made earlier that this board wants to support fixing this problem. With that said, I'm not clear exactly the, what Mr. Baruch's motion speaks to in terms of us not getting hung out like we have in the past. If, if he could clarify that the contingency is that they have sufficient money committed from whatever sources to match our portion and that it to. still meets the technical goals of the project, then I could support it. Otherwise, it's okay. too nebulous. I'd like him to sharpen it up if he could. Mr. Baruf, you, uh, you have a request to... Mr. Dunbar, yeah, I can even sharpen it further that, that, that this has to occur by September 30th since it's the intent to have in the second reading anyway in September according to the representations made by the uh, uh, some of the people involved in this application. So... So are you willing to... That to is... Do have your I am contingency to be that they match suggest. and they're committed to funding? Up to what amount? Uh, up to yes, 50 percent? Yes, sir. And is that 50 percent on the $9 million budget or the $13 million budget, which the engineers say will? 13. The, the $13 million that the staff brought forward. Okay. Uh, All right. Is everyone clear with Mr. Maggie? No, I got that. No, we had some more to Chairman Harris. Yeah, I, I just want to clarify, you know, Mr. Dunbar's, you know, comments. I, I'm willing to get behind this project and to approve 50 percent of the funding uh, of up to the 13 million, which was, was brought to us by staff. But um, if they come back to us and say, okay, we, we have the funding, but yet, I mean, there's going to be situations here where you've got a lawsuit with Spanish Gates. There's my question. They they have to uh, one move forward on the, the settlement, you know, with the uh, the golf course owners to go ahead and buy this property. That when a budget is being approved, that no money will be spent by this district uh, until this project has been completed uh, to the technical specifications that are set by by our staff. That, that's if if that is that that's, that's being done and if this job is done correctly, then our dollars will be spent. But until that time. Not a single dollar. So if they go forward and they can't resolve the, the cost or the cost is going to be too much for the residents and it's got to be a burden to Pasco, so be it. But then if they only get the purchase of property and yet they can't go forward on the project, that's not our concern. We cannot, you know, support that. And then you got the lawsuit involved. Right. So I just want to make sure that we're very clear on this one as we go forward. And, and Can I make one comment for the county? Sure. I think we're fine with that motion except for the statement. 13 million because if we're able to demonstrate to you and your staff that we can build the project for less that should be sufficient and if we have 50 percent well, so but we don't know that yet though I understand that but but I don't want to be tied to to funding half of 13 million if we can demonstrate that we can build it for less well you're only going to pay us what you're going to spend the bills for for that construction but right. we're, we're yeah. going on a worst cost scenario because we've been down this road my, my only concern was it seemed like the motion was including the fact that we had to come up with 50 percent of 13 million which we shouldn't have to do that if we can build it for less. Uh, it'd be clear. 50% 50, 50 of the cost 
of the project up that to meets two. the technical specifications approved by our staff. Not to exceed 13. Well, which yeah. is 13 that, million. That's my concern, is, is David keeps pointing it out, is it's not the dollars. And the dollars is one part of the half contingency, million. but that the dollars are going to a project that's meeting the goals that we're requiring. Right. Well, we're and, okay and, and I don't okay. know how to necessarily well, specify I think, that. I think that we're We've got Mr. some Chair, board, board questions Ms. down here. Ms. Mr. Baru, if you were, Ms. you recognize. Yeah, Mr. Chair, since I'm the, the maker of the motion, okay, I took it for granted that what we were that what I was proposing is to support the item that the staff recommended not take action on today and to save everybody the time to take action on it today with the staff recommendation, which to me means the project has to work, all the science has to be right. I took those things for granted and that it's a maximum amount of money we will fund up to 50% of whatever it is as long as it doesn't exceed the maximum. That's correct. I'll ask the council, motion, are we clear on the motion? <laughs> Ms. West? Yes, I think, however, there was the original motion. It was seconded. So I think you're going to have to vote on the original motion and start over with a new motion if you're... Do we have to vote on it, or can no. Carlos just pull it and just reinstate it? I just, I can, I can withdraw, I can, I, I can withdraw the original motion if that makes it Robert, simpler. Robert Roberts and would say the second has to back off. Yep. Who made the second? I would too. I'll back off. There you go. And I think we have some more questions from. Ms. Yes, we have more more comments uh, down here. Wendy. Um, I personally think something needs to be done for these people, and the district has already committed our full share of the 13.4 million, or up to that, in fiscal year 2016 and 2017. So we are demonstrating our support for this project. Having said that, Pasco County does have issues. They have the lawsuit, they have coordination with DEP, and updated cost estimates, and it's just not the way we do business to give preliminary approval. I think we've demonstrated over and over that we support the project and that we have no intention of backing out, but to go ahead and give uh, preliminary approval at this juncture, I think sets a dangerous precedence, and I would um, personally not be in favor of doing that. Good point. Further comments or questions, Mr. Mayor? I agree, I mean, we have set the monies there. We've already been through our co-op meetings. We, we've come to this stage. It's always been the what ifs. To me, nothing's really changed. I appreciate all these people coming, and we want you to understand the money's there for the project. We just gotta make sure the other half is doing their side of it. And we are, and to my opinion, I agree with staff on this, nothing's changed. We still put the money out there. We're committed to the money up to. So, and we're leaving it in our budget. It's there. We're not year. taking it out of the budget. So when PASCO and that side is ready and gets their lawsuits and DEP and all that done, they'll come back to us and we'll release the funds. But I don't think anything has changed, and I go with, uh, and I go with staff's recommendation because we really haven't changed anything to this date. We're still – there's too many open ends. But we're committed. We've, the money's there. We're not moving the money. The money's there for this project, and we're for this project. So are you, you're saying we don't need a motion? I'm saying that um, um, the, I, I, I guess my motion is, is to agree with staff right. not to have, <coughs> not to make any, what is it actually staff recommendation? I've heard so many things today. I don't know what it is now. <laughs> staff recommendation is take no action. On take this no tonight. action right. until PASCO gets ready. And that's my, that's my, I make a motion to, for staff's recommendation. We I'll have a motion that. to accept staff recommendation. Uh, is there any? I'll second that. We have a, a motion and a second. But before we vote on that, Mark or Robert, could you clarify what Wendy uh, mentioned in terms of the actual money set aside? I know we've got, following this, we've got a budget for the next cycle. Where, where are we in terms of commitments? Yeah, Mr. Dunbar, we've got currently in the, in the budget that you're going to hear from Mr. Campbell uh, in a few minutes, there's a little bit over $3 million mm -hmm. in the budget 
for 2016. So if you approve the, the, the budget in today's action and through September, then there's $3 million in there. With the anticipation and what the committee heard back in February and April is that it'd be a, uh, up to another 3.6 would be budgeted in 2017, again, contingent upon, upon your approval. Um, right now, the, the action that's being requested is, is what, what the committee approved back in April was is that we would not be able to go forward with any contract until we brought that back to the board. And we we're anticipating to have that today, all the information. Um, and so really the, the question is, do you want this brought back to the board or not? And if you, if, uh, if you want it brought back to the board, then no action would, would bring it back to the board before we would go forward with the contract. If you're comfortable with the condition, uh, then we would go forward again, as, the, as I understood it, uh, would be as is provided that the project is exactly as we've discussed it and evaluated it and no more than the thirteen point four or five million dollars. So if well, we accept well, staff recommendation and do not take any action today, uh, you will bring it back in another month or two when you have all the information? That's correct. Well, you know, to, to the question though that Wendy raised that we've give these folks the idea the, or the comfort that we've approved this is really not straight up because we have to first do the three in this coming cycle and then another board would have to approve it the balance three seven the next budget cycle so we, we're sort of not really fully there and but we have a track record of finishing projects that we began and, and if yeah, we begin well, but, a project but but, but Pasco County has a reputation with us on more than one occasion where they spent tremendously more once we stuck our toe in the water, and that's something that gives me pause. Yep. That's correct. Mr. Adams? Correct. Follow, following up on that, I'd love for them to be able to come back next month and say there's not conditions or three months from now or whatever, but until, as Wendy indicated, we're not really making a commitment until everything's done anyway. Uh, it's conditional. Uh, you have, they haven't heard anything today that we're pulling the money or there's concerns about it. I have uh, concerns on making a commitment without knowing what we're buying. And I just like it finalized and no conditions to it. And here's the money then for that when it's ready to go forward. Mr. Beltran. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just for clarification, under our normal process, <coughs> It would be at the June board when the full board, well, it's kind of a two-step, and the full board approves all the inclusion of the cooperative funding projects in the budget that's being proposed, and then ultimately at your budget hearing in September when the budget is, is approved. When the, Typically, the budget's finally approved Yeah, when September. the budget is approved, then we have authorization to go forward with entering into the, the expenditure of those funds. And Mr. Excuse Chairman, me, just Chairman, real quick, yep. I'm all in favor of taking this out of cycle uh, when it's appropriate. No question about that. Okay. But I don't, I don't feel that it's appropriate presently. Thank you. I agree. So the chair is still open for what well, we have more discussion. Yeah. I, I guess the the from what I picked up on this earlier is that September they're going to have a lot of these issues resolved, and I, I'm under the impression that. Once we approve the budget, and traditionally, historically, whenever we start a project, it will move forward from year to year. So I, I think once we get through that hurdle, <clears throat> I think that won't be an issue if everything comes together the way they projected it. So I'm in support of the motion. Uh, what is the motion? The motion I made her to do what staff's recommendation is, which is do nothing, which means they will bring back to us when the deal, the other do, Pasco County and that side is done. Do we actually need a motion to do nothing? No, take the recommendation, I think. I guess we got to take we're, staff's we're recommendation. The, I, I, I think to accept, recommendation. yeah, right. to accept staff's the motion staff is to take no staff's action. recommendation, and we have a second from Mr. Adams. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. No Mr. Chair. Yeah, yes, sir. If I could ask Mr. Hammond a question. Yes, Mr. Brew. Mr. Hammond, the staff is 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 requesting non-action primarily for what reason? Because my concern is that these folks and people that they're making trying to make commitments, it's a multi-party agreement. 
And sometimes in order to get a multi-party agreement completed, the first domino has to fall. So what I don't want to do is if by taking no action, it sends a, a poor message that they really aren't, even though clearly the dialogue from the dais is complete in support of the project, subject to dotting I's and crossing T's. But is there anything that you can see on the horizon that would preclude this from being completed on an agenda item in September? Well, the, 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 the issue there in terms of our recommendation is because of uh, right now the, the lack of commitment of funding. I mean, that's what our policies require, and so that's, that's what our recommendation is based off of. I think the, the issue to be is, is I think we're, we're very optimistic that the project will come in at or under that, that estimated amount, but until we see that, those, those, that bid type of information, I don't know, and so if it is more, then the concern is, is like, like others is, is will there be the funding okay. to go okay. forward with the project? And that's the part there okay. that I, I, so, so, I don't know. So, so, Mr. so, so Mr. Hammond, for the board to be clear, because a lot of discussion has occurred, the only reason that you are not moving forward with the project today, it's the lack of committed funding. Would that be a true statement? That is correct. We're fully supportive and the, from and the, the and, the, and Okay, so, so the point is, gentlemen on the board, that this is the only thing that's holding this thing from moving forward. Why don't you just let the staff make the recommendation subject to funding, you would move forward on Pasco County's part. Mr. Mr. There isn't a lot of left, there isn't a lot left to do. Other than Mr. Baruch, if I may, Randy Maggard, <clears throat> you're probably watching me 45 seconds later, so. <laughs> Still good looking. Still good looking at the time. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Uh, that's, for that. that's questionable. And thank you, I've Mr. lost Adam. control. You have. Yeah, that's all right. Um, but I think at the end of the day, we still have some underlying, other than, the, other than the money, and the money's the big thing under our policy. But we also have this lawsuit. We got, we got an idea here, the, the, the people, and I think Mr. Darnbar brought this up very well, is that if this funding doesn't come, then the funding to the people increases. And there are still some questions out there by us having no action today. This will come back to this board to make sure when we go into this agreement and when we go into our budget next, you know, I have no problem getting into that and putting this money there for this project, which is, assumes what we're doing anyway for our commitment. So and I, I think, I believe there's too, still too many loose ends for me to give a commitment to something that's not committed completely. Does that sound right? Yeah. I don't know. So that's my stake on that, Mr. Roof. But well, Mr. Well, Moran, Mr. Mr. Magger, this is this is this is your county, so I'll defer to your judgment. <laughs> well, hey, uh, hey, Chairman Smith, <laughs> <Here lies there. laughs> well, I, mean, I want to uh, ask a question to David Goldstein here for, for a second. Here, you, you've seen the dialogue, and you, you said earlier that if it's a decision of the board and not taking action, but we feel confident that you're going to support this project if you move you know, forward in the way that you stated here this morning, you're okay with it. Based on the conversation you've heard here this morning, if we take no action and say, you continue to proceed, we will be here when you guys come back to us with appropriate funding, are you appropriate, are you okay with this? Well, we would have liked a conditional approval, I'm not going to lie. But right. Okay, I get that. Are we going to give up on this project, be, you know, based on the comments we've heard today? No, we're not going to give up. We're going to still move forward. We're going to get our RFI responses back, and hopefully it'll show the project comes in less. We're, going to, we're, we're vigorously defending this lawsuit. We think we're going to win. With all due respect to Spanish Gate. So we're moving forward on this project. We believe that this is the solution. We believe in these residents. They've supported this project. They've worked hard on it. The county is not giving up on this project, even if you don't give us a conditional approval today. Um, we're encouraged by the comments, and so we'll just have to hope that you live by those comments when it comes to you again for final approval. Um, hopefully we don't need to bring all these people again. Uh, but didn't have to. Well, the, val the validation of... Uh, Chairman Babb's comment would come in the next meeting, which is, to quote what's been said, if we approve our budget, which I expect we will, it will have the first installment of $3 million as been talked about today. So I think that's a takeaway that everybody can feel pretty comfortable, the commitment of this board to want to resolve the problem. But all the, items been, all the items that have been brought up 
are simply to make sure that it happens the right way. I think that's fair to say. Any further comments or questions? Mr. Moran. Mr. Chairman, where I'm, Mark, maybe you can help me through this. Where I'm a little confused is the original motion that was put before us, I thought, addressed um, much of this, is it seems to be there's sentiment on the board here to move this forward. We have um, FY 2016 for $3 million present. We've got um, the residents have been crystal clear that they're in for $112, not a penny more, if I heard it loud enough, I'm sure. Uh, what I thought was moving forward is that in early July, it appears the RFIs are coming in, and the motion was to move forward in good faith on this and contingent on making sure it was crystal clear where we stood on this as far as the money prior, prior to the September meeting. So I, I guess I'm a little confused at what I'm missing here by, again, not moving forward in any fashion. Am I missing any part of that? Am I framing up properly? Well, originally in the in, in the real original board packet, again, we um, were recommending going forward with that as we were continuing to evaluate the information from the county. We um, understood there that they did not have their, all they had committed at least right now was four and a half million and we got a thirteen and a half million dollar project and that if it comes in over, then they would have to go back and either get additional funds from the residents or scale back the project. And so, um, again, we're from a technical or, or, the, or the contingency of it meeting our standards here and we pull back in September. We could, and so, but that was based on our, rec as a result of that, then our recommendation, as we indicated earlier, change. And so what we gave you today is if you take no action, the money is still would be included in the budget. And so as soon as they get their funding in place, they, we'd come back and, and would recommend approval. You know, again, if the, if the information is the same, then we'd, be, we'd anticipate recommending go forward. As soon as that funding, we're assured that the funding is in place for the project that we're being asked to consider. Given the, <clears throat> I fully understand it, I, I think, given the contingency and a clear contingency, and I understand the, the indigestion on that, is given the clear contingency, I don't see the difference. As long as in September it's crystal clear to us where we stand on this, with the taxpayer's money, but. Um, Ms. Griffin, had a, had a comment, Wendy? Well, I see a difference in that I don't want us ever to be construed. We've already said we're interested in the project. We have money budgeted, but the county has decisions to make about whether they're going to buy a $2 million piece of property. I don't want us to have anything that sways their decision. There's a risk with our approval. There's a risk without, but with our some sort of unusual approval that we wouldn't normally give any other entity that they would take that to the bank and we'd somehow be involved later on of giving them approval or some tacit approval for buying the property. In addition, there's an open lawsuit right now which I personally do not want us to get into. That needs to be settled when, if we give them some kind of approval that that might sway their, their court uh, decision one way or the other. I just think those things need to be resolved and we should stay out of them and then we'll give our final approval. Any further comments or questions? Mr. Chairman, um, I would just say uh, Ms. Griffin makes a point in that the district's policy on the cooperative funding um, requires cooperators to identify the sources of um, their match of funding that they're asking the board for. So in this instance, there is a, a deficit that's appearing. And if the board chooses to approve something with a contingent upon final identification of either the cost that meets the nine million um, or contingent upon it turning out to be something different, they will need to waive the policy. It's a board policy. Um, and uh, that is outside of the normal process, as Ms. Griffin has pointed out. Waive that today if we are accepting staff's recommendation. Correct. To Correct. If, you, if the board. Action, then we can yeah, talk about waiving point. it next month. <clears throat> Correct. The point. If I, the board would, takes no action today, there's, you, you won't do anything. Exactly right. a, a point of personal privilege, I would hope not to have to go through a lengthy, convoluted uh, case next month. Uh, the request for information, <laughs> the, the request for information is not a binding bid, and I hope next month we don't raise the question that we don't have a firm bid, and therefore we can't take any action next month. So I, I want us to be in a position to take final action if it comes back next month. 
that's editorial. Uh, you can comment <laughs> and shoot it one, down all you want to. Call a question. We have a question has been called. I just wanted to tag on to him that I think would tell Hillsborough County they need to post haste work with DEP and figure out what they have and what they don't have so that we have a realistic Government. number. Pasco, Pasco. 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 Pasco County, Pasco. sorry. Okay. The question has been they called. Do we need to vote on whether to have the question or not? Or is there more we comment? Got a motion in we, second, we have a motion in a second, but mm -hmm. uh, since the question is <coughs> called, you're technically supposed to vote on the, no. whether to vote. So I'll go ahead. And, uh, Mr. Seb, the, the motion. What, what you need to restate the motion if there is a motion. Motion is that we to accept, follow staff recommendation. We accept okay. staff's recommendation of no action. Of no action. Okay, I think if if it's if the staff's recommendation of no action, the board doesn't need to do anything. That's it's correct. no action. Okay. Well, he made the motion, and we have a second. Do do, do they withdraw it? Yes. <laughs> On the advice of council, uh, it, it's uh, the motion Usually, motion yeah. to accept staff's recommendation. Would it hurt anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> usually, we usually vote on staff's recommendation. So we'll, we'll I, just take a vote. We'll just take, take a vote, vote we'll and if, we, if it's thrown out, we'll be thrown out. We're going to take a vote. All those in favor of the motion to accept staff's recommendation of no action, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 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 One nay. The vote carries by uh, um, total majority of one dissension. That takes care of the, the issue. I hope the residents will know Mr. for sure Simpt. we will remember red. Mr. Simpt. And I, I, before you adjourn, and I just want to thank you know, all those who, who attended here today, and uh, hopefully you can, uh, no pun intended, take this to the bank. Uh, this board you know, supports this project. If everything continues to move in the direction that uh, we believe it's going to move in, that we are here for you. And again, we just thank you so much for showing up here this morning and, um, and hopefully that we can get this whole thing resolved and, and not have to, to see you in September. And, so, and your, thank you. your, your council can bring a resolution or you can sign petitions or things like that. Uh, and hopefully we would be able to put that into the record and you would not need to physically be here. You're certainly welcome. We have Just a lot of uh, Clark Hobby and Dave Goldstein, you have to wear red. So in September, when you come back to remind us. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank we'll you. we'll, Thank we'll you. pause for just a minute to let them exit. The next item on our agenda, Resource Management Committee, is item number 28. Jason, you're up. Uh, you want to pause for a minute and let them clear the room? Just wait one minute. Yeah. You still there? Mark, did you hear Carlos? I did not hear I'm him. here. Hey, there he is. Okay, Carlos, I I'm here. Someone asked for, oh, yeah, asked for clarification. I wanted to be sure you voted in favor of the motion. Uh, I did vote in favor of the motion. Thank, thank you. We, we, we wanted to be sure we were clear. Thank you. Item 28 is the scope change for the Polytechnic University. Right down, I'll yeah. Do they sell it at Publix? Are we going to start it? If I could ask those who are exiting the room to hold down their conversation and, and do it in the hallway, we appreciate your time. We need to move on with our agenda. The next case is the scope change for the Auburndale uh, Florida Polytech University Reclaim Water Storage and Transmission, uh, item 28. Jason? Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, members of the board. Yes, just a moment. Yeah. And Les, I've been over this with staff. If staff, if board doesn't, I don't want to cut your presentation. I make a motion to approve staff's recommendation because this is a great project. Yeah, second. I don't want to wa waste your time. We've it's been through this. It's a two to one for us. Can we discuss wasting this time? We can. Okay. We can <laughs> do that. We got a second. We can we can do the discussion no, here we, now. We have a we have a motion to approve staff's recommendation on agenda item 29. 
Uh, we yeah, have enough. Uh, Twenty eight, excuse me. Do we have enough? One, two. You, I got a second over here. Do we have enough to vote? Yeah, eight. Yes, we have enough to vote. What color shirts do Burke County folks have on today? Is that a white shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my uniform on today. He's so casual. Well, they're trying to slip one by, aren't they? <laughs> we have. We got Carlos. Too. We have a motion, and was there a second? We don't have a four more vote. We need one more. We've got eight. We have eight. Gone. Call the call the question. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's our boy. We yeah. have a motion. That's the Carlos. Oh, everybody's oh, Carlos yeah, everybody's we have, <laughs> we've identified we have a legal quorum and we have Paul, a motion. Way too fast. We thought it'd take at least thirty minutes for everybody. Carlos, <laughs> we, is only we have seconds behind most. We have a quorum and we have a motion and a second. Is what you, please, for everybody who just came back in the room, please redefine what the motion is. To accept staff's recommendation on the oh, Auburndale yep. change of scope on item 28 is change of scope, Auburndale, Florida Polytech University yeah, Reclaim Water Storage and Transmission Project. I'm familiar. We have a motion and a second. We do have a quorum. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The aye. aye. Ja Jason, I, I, I'll be I the, the motion quickest for Jason president. to sit down. <laughs> Just a comment. Auburndale's got, done a good job on this. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that whole university area out there, they seem to have that well in hand. Well, and Auburndale, Lakeland, and everybody's done a good okay. job. It, it's, it's impressive if you have not driven through there, drop off of Interstate 4 sometime and drive through. It's a campus waiting for thousands. It's, it's, it's great. No comment. <laughs> Management committee. Item 29 is information only, and no, that's going to be come. Mike. Yeah. We're going to see. Yeah, right. Who's going to do that? USF's going to take it over in five years. Yeah. <laughs> that's just uh, uh, only if the board wanted any presentations on that. These are just routine reports. I, I don't think we need any. That, that was item 29. Item 30 is uh, for information as well. No action needed. <clears throat> for our committee, I'll hand the gavel back to adjourn. Resource time. Management Committee and turn it back over to the chair. You have it, Michael. They're what are you going to do? With it? Actually, it's uh, finance. Pass it along. They're out of control. We'll call the Finance Outreach and Planning Committee together, as was stated uh, by Robert when we started off. We're going to put uh, item 33, the legislative update, in front of the budget. Colleen? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, for the record, Colleen Thayer, Bureau Chief, Public Affairs. Um, they finally finished. That's good. Uh, they passed a $78.7 billion budget, um, which is, as of about an hour ago, 46 point something million shorter. The governor signed the budget this morning and vetoed about $46 million worth of projects. Um, so I will, I was sitting back there kind of trying to look through the veto list and there are a few things that are impactful. So I'll try to touch on that a little bit as we go through. Um, the Ag and Natural Resources budget, primarily issues relating to the implementation of Amendment 1, was one of the last issues that seemed to be settled. Um, and the final budget was um, placed on the members' desks last Tuesday. This slide highlights um, most of that budget with specific emphasis on the areas that can or directly affect the district. And I also provided you a written summary that had some additional details on it. There is $17.4 million for land acquisition statewide. This is for projects on the approved Acquisition and Restoration Council priority list. Um, there's 11 million for, um, was appropriated for land management to the water management districts through that new land acquisition um, trust fund. Of that, 2.75 million was appropriated to this district. A little more than 27 million was provided for dispersed water management and water farming to the districts. Projects can be located in more than one water management district. That's how they get it. There is one million provided to the district, to our district, for a conservation easement, Heritage Lake in Pasco County. Um, 
addition, I was going to say additionally, there's funding from this year that's being reappropriated from this for the same purpose. Um, that was about 1.5 million, and that was just vetoed. Um, there is almost 45 million for Springs, plus another 5 million that was just vetoed um, in DAX's budget for BMPs. That money can be used. Um, the Springs money can be used for land acquisition to protect Springs and for capital projects that protect the quality and quantity of water that flow for Springs. Did they veto this morning? About 20 minutes ago. Okay. So the overall Springs money is fine. The money five. for DAX, the $5 million for DAX was vetoed. And then there was 70, a little over $73 million in water project funding. And there are numerous water projects that were vetoed. Um, and just my quick read on my phone, you have a list of the projects. Um, but I can just give you a really quick rundown from the ones that I caught quick. I might have missed one or two. I don't think I did. In our district, the Dade City stormwater project, it was $1.9 million, was vetoed. DeSoto County's U.S. 17 water extension project for 500000 was vetoed. The Madeira Beach project, Ma not be yeah, Madeira Beach project, the, um, and I say this wrong, oh, Mark, I lost Mark, um, the Pithla Cody project was vetoed. Uh, Sarasota County Philippi Creek project was vetoed, and the Zephyr Hills Fire Protection Water Line project was vetoed. That's what I caught. Uh, moving on. The implementation of the constitutional amendment. Um, this legislation, as you know from earlier reports, um, really was the same legislation that was around during the regular session. It implemented the, con the constitutional amendment. It terminated various trust funds that received dock stamp revenues from for environmental programs within DEP. Um, it revised the distribution of revenue from dock stamp to satisfy the amendment. Um, there is one specific provision of the bill in, um, related to the districts, and that is the payment in lieu of taxes section. It specifically relates to the reinstatement of PILT. The legislation requires districts to pay PILT to counties with populations below a specific threshold, which is 150,000 population. For us, that is Citrus, DeSoto, and Sumter counties. Um, and it totals about $131,500 a year. Um, also, I didn't include it on the slide, but I wanted to mention, mention briefly Senate Bill um, 2512A. It was another implementing bill. Um, that one related to health insurance subsidies for retirees and the contribution rates paid by employers. Um, it set the contribution rate for this year. Um, for members of the state administered plan at 1.66% of gross compensation for each pay period. And that will, meet, that will mean a slight increase in our health insurance budget, about $30,000. Um, so the budget line items on the first slide, which really were the um, $2.75 million for the water management, for the, for water, for management, land management, um, the million for Pasco County, um, and then these two issues will be brought back to you in July. Mm -hmm. Those will be the budget issues brought back. And then I just wanted to briefly mention um, the one substantive piece of legislation that passed during special session, which provided a summary. This was the tax cut package. Um, there, were several, there were several permanent tax reductions and then a few temporary tax um, reductions that I'm sure everybody's heard of. Um, and then the sheet that I gave you provided a little more depth of, of all of those. 
Um, but a couple of the highlights included the 10-day back-to-school holiday, various agricultural items, gun club memberships, and motor vehicles brought into the state by military personnel deployed outside of the U.S. And this legislation's already been signed into law. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Oh, I do have one, and I, I, if I missed it, I'm sorry. How about the Water Committee? What ended the, up on that? The Water Committee did not pass. Very good. There was a lot of discussion about that during special session and a lot of iterations. I, never, um, I lost no. track of it. I couldn't, no. I lost track of it yeah. this last week, so I no. didn't really know what happened. I was, no, it did not pass. This, this may be a question for John more than you, but <clears throat> based on what was approved, the 2.75 and the million, uh, how does that square with what we were budgeting? I mean, did we suffer a net cut, or is it too early for you to reconcile that in the budget, John? Bring back if the July 28th Did we have those kind of dollars plugged in as a revenue source? We did not. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, Colleen? Get overtime pay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks. Speaking of overtime, but just to make sure the governing board understands, there is no paycheck increase for you all in this budget either. So, <laughs> as long as it's not a reduction, there's no right? decrease Same. either. Okay. No decrease. As, as a famous Polk County uh, politician once said, our life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness is not at stake when they're not in Tallahassee. Okay. All right. <laughs> you say that, Paul? <laughs> no, Fred Jones. All right. So, item 32 is presentation of the. Uh, 1516 annual budget. With that, Mr. Campbell. Good morning, Mr. Chair and fellow members of the board. Uh, for the record, I'm John Campbell, Director of Management Services. This morning, I'd like to present the uh, 2016 fiscal year recommended annual service budget. Uh, and this is the agenda. I'm, I'm going to just jump right into uh, the achievement and, and the budget itself. I want to make a note that there are three additional sheets that were placed at your seat at the dais, uh, and those are supplemental or, or replacement in the, in the form of the recommendation. We've actually modified that a bit, and I'll point that out when I get to that point in the presentation. Uh, these are the budget goals that were set by, by you, the board. Um, for our budget, and I'm pleased to uh, present that uh, we have met <coughs> each and every one of these three goals by, by a comfortable margin, um, and that is the project side of the budget equal at least 50%. We, we achieved a 56%. Operating expenditures not to exceed 80% of ad valorem revenue, and we're at 70. And similar to that, salary and benefits not to exceed 50% of ad valorem, and we're at 46%. This is a chart of the expenditures by category, uh, and just for the layout of the chart itself, the first column of numbers is the current fiscal year 15 budget. The second column is the preliminary budget we submitted back in January for 2016. And the third column is really what we're concerned about. That is the proposed budget that I'm presenting today, the fiscal year 2016 recommended annual service budget. The total of that budget is $166.7 million. Uh, which is a $400,000 increase or a 0% increase over 2015. So very similar, although there are some changes. The top half, as you are familiar, of this chart represents the recurring or operating budget, and that budget is up half a million dollars or 1%. And I want to make a point to that. Uh, that half a million dollars represents about 25% of our pro uh, projected ad valorem increase, which is a rollback, just a new growth model, or half of the projected 2% new growth ad valorem revenue model projected and, and built into this budget. So again, it, it reflects some efficiencies and gains that we've made in preparing this budget over prior year. I want to mention that there are no new FTEs in this budget, and I'll get to the details of that in a, in a minute. There are no merit increases in the budget. 
Operating expenses are down almost a million dollars. They're down $900,000 or 6% from 2015. And I, and I want to give a shout out to our bureau chiefs who have really done a great job in not only holding the line in this area, but actually finding more savings as they've looked through this budget for FY 2016. Contracted services for operational support and maintenance is up about $100,000. And I want to add that that uh, really is attributed to the uh, five-year reevaluation of several MFLs, including uh, Chazowitska, Homosassa, Lower Hillsboro, et cetera. All of this detail is in the budget package that is at your seat. Operating cap capital outlay is up $300,000. That's really attributable to a fixed or a field equipment sinking fund that we're funding in this 2016 budget in the amount of $400,000. The bottom half of the budget reflects the project side or non-recurring portion of the budget. As I previously mentioned, uh, our goal is to have at least half of the budget in that area, and we've handily uh, achieved that at 56 percent. Contracted services for district projects uh, is up about 9 percent, and that's primarily due to the hydrological investigation of the lower Florida and Aquifer in Polk County, and that's funded at an amount of about $2 million in this budget. District grants, 10% uh, decrease, but I want to add a special mention that this does include $10 million for the <coughs> partnership, as we have also in 2015. CFI projects are down about 13%. I'll have a comment on that in a minute. And fixed capital outlay. Um, that, that is up about $7.8 million, or 260%, and that reflects Florida Forever Trust Fund dollars that were previously appropriated to the district for the sole purpose of, of purchasing lands. So we've budgeted that at $10.8 million in this recommended annual service budget for fiscal 2016. This again is the expenditure by category depicted in a pie chart. And as I mentioned before, uh, this compares very favorably to 2015. As you can see, the left side of those pie charts reflect the project side of the budget, and they're both at 56%. The corresponding recurring budget on the right side of this pie chart is at 44% for both fiscal 15 and 2016 recommended. We have two proposed changes. Uh, that I'm going to uh, mention, one of which uh, Mr. Jason Mickle approached uh, and was going to present that I think the board has already approved. And the first line is another project that's currently in the budget. It's in the budget at, at a funded amount of $33,000. This project has no change in scope. It has no increase in cost. The costs are capped at $1,320,000. Uh, it's previously approved. There's no change in cost benefit effectiveness or resource benefit. Essentially, this project, City of Northport <laughs> Reclaim tra Water Transmission Main Phase 3 project, is ex being accelerated due to the fact that they no longer need several land easements that were previously thought to be needed. So they're accelerating the construction of the project. They've asked us to accelerate the funding uh, that was reserved for 2017 and to add that $325,000 to the 2016 budget. So with those two changes, if they're approved, we will bring back in July an additional $475,000 on the project side of the budget for your review and approval. As I previously mentioned, uh, this budget uh, includes 574 full-time equivalents. That is level with the 2015 budget, so there are no new FTEs. And I want to mention also that since 2010, the district has reduced over 35% of their FTE count from a high of 891. That's a reduction of 317 FTEs over that time period. This chart depicts the expenditures by program. Uh, and I want to make one mention here. As I've mentioned in past years, the kind of top uh, 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock position on that pie chart in black and orange represents district outreach, management, and administration costs. And those costs are capped at 15% by statute. 
We are currently at 9% for 2015, and we're also at a recommended 9% for 2016. Yeah, I just, I'd like to interject right there for the board because I've been pushing on John a lot as I sit and look at charts and talk about the money. You could get the wrong impression if you didn't look at the number. Not us, but I think the outside world could to say that we're spending so many dollars on salaries and whatnot, and it would look like that the, the district is sort of fat on overhead when, in fact, it's not. So many, the vast majority of the employees that work are out taking care of things that we've already done. And so John's point here, this black line, if you wanted to know the true overhead of the district, it's 9%, which is fabulous, means that 91% of the dollars spent are going where they're supposed to go. So right. I don't want to overlook that because we've have been hitting you a lot, particularly on a long range look at this because that overhead factor is really thin. They're doing a good job. So go ahead, John. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. Uh, this chart depicts the expenditures by area of responsibility. Uh, and we're required by statute to report the total estimated budget for each of these AORs. Uh, I want to point out the green or olive green section of the chart represents natural systems, and that is up over 15, FY15, due to the fact that we have that $10.8 million budgeted for land purchases in the FCO category, fixed capital outlay, versus $3 million for 2015. And I also want to mention in the red section, the water quality, um, that is down as a proportion of the budget, and it's really due to several large projects in the Tampa Bay region being completed over the past several years, uh, and we expect those numbers to actually increase as soon as 2017 and beyond due to uh, expanded projects coming online in the northern part of the districts, specifically the springs. Uh, this chart represents the revenues by source. Our largest single component revenue is, uh, source is ad valorem. As I mentioned before, we, are bu we have built this budget on a rollback millage rate model. So the only increase that we're reflecting in this budget for ad valorem revenue source is the 2% new unit growth. Um, we currently have the preliminary uh, tax rolls in from all of the 16 counties of the district, and those total 6.3%. Really, the specific thing I want to mention is that July 1st, we'll get the certifications of value, and we'll calculate the rollback rate that then we'll bring back to the board for approval at the July 28th board meeting. State funding does not include any of the items that Ms. Thayer just presented to you. We're hopeful that we'll be able to bring most of those back uh, or whatever we do have back to you in July and uh, inform you about all of those different uh, new state revenues. And I want to make mention of the last line use of reserves. Currently it's at $8.1 million in reserves. This is the second consecutive budget in many years, if not ever, that we've actually budgeted the use of general fund reserves at an amount of $3.9 million. Again, that's subject to change based on the two projects that I presented. That number may, in fact, go up and may be affected by the uh, state dollars as they come down to us. And again, this is the revenues by source. As I mentioned before, 62%, which is fairly consistent with 2015, uh, of our revenues are represented by ad valorem tax revenue. Now this is the calendar going forward. Uh, July 1, as I mentioned, we'll get the certifications of taxable value. July 28, we'll bring back any changes to the budget. Uh, we'll bring back the uh, uh, rollback millage rate. And at that point, you would, uh, uh, if assuming you approve, approve a tentative uh, millage rate for, for the budget to be uh, presented to uh, Tallahassee uh, August 1st. And then the next two important dates are September 15 and 29 for the public trim hearings meetings in Tampa. I wanted to quickly run through the available reserves. Uh, these are projected based on the budget that I presented, obviously subject to change. Um, at, at the current time, we have $213 million available for future use, unappropriated fund balance that's in the first column. As I mentioned previously, this budget contemplates about $8.1 million of reserve usage to balance the budget, and that leaves the district with $205 million of unappropriated fund balance for future use. Mr. Chairman, when we get to the long term, please remember, well, we're here. Go. <laughs> go back one, please, if you mm -hmm. don't mind, Mr. Chairman. 
and I, I, I harped on this a little bit last time, but the middle, I, mean, I understand the basin money is out there and where it's going to be spent, but when we move to line number two, the committed, we, 73 million, theoretically, if you move over the next chart, is coming off that red line, that bottom black line. So if we do that, we're not really as far out in reserves as we think we are on that chart. Which comes to my question, and I know we have talked about this, about, well, you know, money amount? goes up in there, but I, I believe at some time, and it may not have to be at this particular meeting, it's going to have to have the meeting, we need to come up with that economic stabilization fund. Is two months enough? Because if you change that to three, or if you change that to four, this line keeps falling this way. And I also understand the 50 million is to change, but at the end of the day, I mean, I look at it, it's not where it's a misleading number, but we're not going out as far as we think we are because that number won't go any lower, the 23.5. The 50 may change, but at some point we need to have a conversation on this budget about how much do we want for that economic st stabilization fund. Is two months enough? Then that changes that bottom line at our reserves, which tells us long-term spending. Even though funding can go up and down, but it, some of this will not change. So I, I don't know when that conversation needs to be had, but I just wanted to point that out, that we're not going out to really 25, 26. We're going out roughly to 23, 24 is really with our reserves. If you take away those funds that we have saved that we have to, so they're, they're committed. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, and John, is, we've been through this drill many times. And sure. He's done the iterations, and here's the push-pull. Uh, and I think the takeaway what we finally concluded is rather than try to do this out 10 years, that we really need to look at it every two. And I think John's committed to looking at it every year. But the, uh, if you start with the assumption that you want a certain amount of reserves, which I agree with you 100%, we need a number as business people to have there, whatever that is. Whatever it is. But when, when he uses that as his driver, the impact that it pushes is usually the cooperative funding. And, and the first couple of times he ran it, there was such a dramatic decrease early on and then it begins to grow again that it would, I think, take us back to say, well, gee, we have so much in there, why are we cutting it so early? So it's a, it's a fine balance between what's the right amount of reserves to have at all times versus, you know, where should we make cuts to make that happen? And I think John's committed to just do it every year or so for us to look at and just keep it. It's, it's a moving tar target for us. But I think we're all on the same page that we need sufficient funds there so we're not ever going to run out. But the give and take is going to be with projects. Okay, I, got, uh, I agree with that. But if we don't set what our... Philosophy is? Yes. Yeah. Then these numbers will... If we do it year to year, that's going to be skewed. If you, it, what I don't... What I, uh, I guess my concern is, and you're a lot better businessman in money than I am on this, if you skew that every year to two years... And you don't have your set what we, we need to maintain safely for this district. I don't want that to fluctuate. I, I, you know, to me, I feel much more comfortable knowing this is what I got to have than we build off of that. We'll, we'll design that. He has done three, six, and 12 months of reserves for us and, and looked at it. And that's why I said we, you look at that and you say, it's pretty aggressive. Well, we can we can have a separate discussion and bring all three well, of those fine. and get the philosophy flavor from the board if you'd like. Didn't really want to mix it with the annual. No, budget. not today. But I wanted to point that out. When you look at these reserves, you got to take that twenty three five out of that, yeah. and you got to take that fifty out of that. Then that drops you back not ten years. Well, I know he's had interaction with all of the governing board. I think what John I <laughs> just asked you to review those charts that you and I looked at so they can see it. Maybe you can pull in what everybody's thoughts are and how much is the right amount, and then we can have a discussion following. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We didn't want to do it today, but I did want to point that out on that bottom line. Good Thank points. you. What's the statutory minimum? Well, DEP has, a, to me, an unrealistic level that they think sufficient. It's, it's not enough. Was it 60 days? Two, two days. months. Two Which months. is what this is, right? Yeah. This the is 60 20, days here. Yeah, the 23. The 23.5 is two months. The 23. Uh, Million five hundred thousand represents sixteen point six seven percent or two months. Have a bad storm to take care of that. <laughs> well, where that can come in though on that reserve, what you got to play into that, and I've been in this in the past, and that's the reason you got to think about it. There are certain times that we may have to buy a piece of property, yeah. 
that comes out of this until the money comes back from the state at a time. So you have to sort of figure that in. We had a project three or four years ago. It was an $11 million purchase. We had to purchase it. The money was coming back from the state, but we were out $11 million in our funds. So you sort of got to think about that as you go. Now, that's just purchasing land if we decide to go that way. But, you, you know, that goes back to what you say. You can get real caught in 60 days depending on what you got you have going real quick. So I, I agree with you. That's probably an unrealistic number. Well, <laughs> it, is, it is for most businesses. Though. I would and think This is would. a big business. So. This is a big business. So that's just a conversation for another day. Right. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you, Chairman. Done. Yep, and uh, the last item I want to present before I get to the staff recommendation on the fiscal 2016 budget is the long-term funding plan. Um, and this model is presented for your information. Uh, I want to make note that the uh, top line, the gold line, represents the use of reserves over the 10-year projected period through 2026. And you can see those numbers tapering. <laughs> the very bottom line, again, a point out in 20. Uh, 16, the $205 million where we're starting, assuming this budget is approved, and moving forward through 2026, you can see what happens to the reserve number. Um, and a special note, the blue section represents the project side of the budget each year. Um, a, a special consideration here is that this budget in 2016 includes an, a, a large amount of money, FCO dollars, the Florida Forever Trust Fund money, about $10.8 million. So true projects, as you would consider them, about $82 million are funded. Um, we've used that model and, and kind of rolled forward at a tapered $90 million outset funding level with $3 million of FCO land money. So, so tapering that down for about five years uh, uh, g builds this model and, and going forward builds that project side of the budget at a 2% rate. And I'll mention the 2% rate is applied to the new growth on the ad valorem revenue, so the green line's affected by that. The red line represents, or the red portion of the bar represents the recurring or operating budget that's also grown at 2%. The purple portion, that's a new uh, uh, portion that we brought, I think, last month or the month before. That represents that, that district outreach management administration piece. That also has grown at 2%. So these numbers are going to change, and I am committed to bring this back to you every year, if not more frequently. Uh, at your discretion. Um, so this is a living model. It's not something you're going to put on a shelf and let it get dusty. With that, the staff recommendation is to authorize staff to prepare the standard form tentative budget submission for FY 2015-16 based on the recommended annual service budget as presented, adjusted for any modifications made by the governing board on June 23rd today, and changes in estimated ad valorem revenue based on the July uh, one, certifications of taxable value, and any change in state revenue. Thank you, John. Questions of John? I'll entertain a motion. Um, so moved. Second. And a second. Second. Thank you. All Thank in you. favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Aye. That an aye in favor? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's 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 that delay. Okay. Items number 34 through 39 are routine reports, and I will hand the gavel back over to Mr. Moran. This committee is adjourned. Northwest Florida Water Management District, dated June 23rd. Uh, we have no consent items moved for discussion. We have no denials. Refer to the governing board at this meeting. We do have two submit and file reports, which are items number 42 and 43 on your agenda. Are there any questions regarding to, related to those routine reports? Seeing none, the regulation committee <coughs> stand adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Moran. I call the order to operation and lands committee. Uh, we had nothing moved on item 44. We now move to item 45 with Mr. Kinsman. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Mm -hmm. um, we're firmly entrenched in normal summertime weather patterns. Unfortunately, we just, they just haven't been widespread. We've seen local accumulations, but we haven't seen yeah, right. widespread uh, accumulation to date. I'd like to start with just looking back at the um, dry season. And this is a, we had a, a good dry season overall. It actually came out fairly well near, near normal. Um, the first half was well above normal. And then we started going into this dry period. This extended up to this date. 
And so what you'll see as we go through the rest of the graphics is these uh, improvements and then we start to see more normal, actually normal uh, dry season declines. This is rainfall for last month. You can see the Tampa Bay area received a yeah, great deal rain. of rain, um, over 12 inches. And likewise, you can see over in Polk County, less than a, about a tenth of an inch. So, I mean, um, really, it was, uh, it was pretty dry in the central part of the district. 12-month rainfall, you can see the, a little bit of worsening conditions over in the Heartland area. That's all. But um, not to, too much, nothing to worry about here. Uh, looking at the trend, you can see at the end of last month, we were about a four-tenths of an inch deficit. Oh, really? If you look at the rainfall we received to date for this month, that decreases to about two-inch deficit. But, of course, we have another week of the month to go. So I do anticipate getting additional rainfall that will decrease that number. Still nothing to worry about here at all. This is rainfall to date, and you can see it has been very dry uh, in most of the district. However, uh, the area that was dry last month has received about 12 inches of rainfall so far this month over in Polk County. And likewise, down in Highlands County, there was uh, some significant rainfall, and that will show up in some of these graphics. Um, this is groundwater in the northern counties. And, <coughs> Um, as I did a couple months ago, I, I put a few indicators showing where we have been at the same week for the past four years. And you can see that we are seeing declines in the north because the north has been receiving uh, much less than normal rainfall for the past couple months. Central counties are still looking good because they've been getting rainfall. Um, and the southern counties still looking pretty good as well. Northern Lakes, we're, like I said, we've been seeing declines, but the declines have been relatively minor this month. Tampa Bay Lakes actually improved. Polk Uplands actually saw a significant improvement this past this, this month in June. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Lake Wills Ridge actually saw a slight improvement as well. The Withlacoochee River is declining as, as to be expected, um, but still well within normal for this uh, time of year. The, likewise, the Hillsborough River is declining, but still well within normal. Hillsborough Reservoir right, um, did show some declines, but I mean, this is very, very healthy. The Alifaya is a, a river that fluctuates pretty rapidly um, with rainfall. It, it'll come up very quickly if you get rainfall, it'll drop very quickly if you don't. Um, you can see that it has been declining, but it did jump up here in the past uh, couple weeks. The Bill Young Reservoir has 14 billion gallons. Uh, Peace River, still well within normal. And public supply there, uh, 392 days supply. Now, they, you could, they have uh, used about 782 million gallons of rainfall the, uh, of, of water in the past uh, month. And that's just because of the drier, the normal conditions. The climate uh, forecast is a little bit different once again. Um, the uh, warming in the Pacific is looking like we may be moving into a stronger than normal El Nino cycle. And that is reflected in these graphics. This is for July and essentially shows Florida, sort of our area, in equal chances of above normal, below normal rainfall, normal, basically normal rainfall. And for the same, same for the next three months. And they're equating this once again to a, de a reduction in um, Atlantic storms. Now that doesn't mean that we won't get rainfall from Gulf storms or, or just heavy rainfalls. The uh, extended precipitation forecast picks up above normal rainfall, and as you can see, as you get um, later into the winter and spring months, that signal strengthens, and that's because they're expecting a moderate to perhaps even a, a, a uh, strong El Nino. In fact, right now, looking at the temperatures of the Pacific, they haven't been this warm this early in the year um, since the uh, very strong El Nino we had back in 1997. And that's not to say that's going to happen because we've seen these things fall apart. But if that does happen and we get the rainfall that we had back in 1997, we're going to have a lot of wet areas in this district because we're in a very good shape right now. Um, likewise, uh, temperature forecast. Expecting above normal temperatures during the summer, but because of the El Nino cycle, um, they're looking at below normal temperatures in the winter. So in summary, our rainfall patterns are, are typical normal for uh, uh, summer, but we just really haven't seen regional accumulations to date. Our hydrologic indicators are all very, very good, and our forecast has shifted toward normal rainfall in the near, uh, near term and perhaps above normal temperature in the future. So with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have.
Any questions from the board? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions on our submit and files? If there are none, operations of land is adjourned. Thank you very much. I'll go ahead and open up the general counsel's report. Uh, there were no items uh, moved for discussion, and uh, unless there's no questions on the litigation or rulemaking uh, updates we have in our books. If not, I'll go ahead and ask if there's any other updates on any other uh, committees or liaisons. If not, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, ask uh, Robert Beltran to give us a solid update or just hello. Well, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to take a second to recognize the hard work that was done on the budget uh, by Mr. Campbell and everybody from the staff and specifically the executive team and, and the board as an extension of, of our team. I think together we have a very responsible budget that we're looking at moving forward. I think FY15-16 is a year to watch to see what's going on. You saw some shifts in different programmatic areas of the budget. But overall, what I thought was most important, Mr. Dunbar hit on this quite a little bit, is that we see an increase in 2% potentially for the Avalorum new growth, which means more responsibilities, more intake, yet we continue to find those efficiencies and only see a 1% increase on the operational side of the budget. So I just want to thank staff for their hard work, and I want to thank the board for their direction on where we're going with our budget. And I think this is a, a good year for us, and we'll continue to meet the mission of the district and the goals set forth by this board. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. John, thank you very much and, and very good comments. Um, before we ad adjourn, just like to recognize the uh, three individuals for their outstanding work and their longevity here with the uh, district. First and foremost, uh, John Emery, uh, Chief Advisor to Environmental Sciences um, for 25 years, uh, Paula McCleary for 30 years, and Addis Cortez uh, also for 30 years. Um, please make note of the upcoming meeting locations listed at the end of today's agenda, July, August, September, and I also believe October as well. Uh, we'll be in uh, Tampa. Uh, the public hearing is now recessed. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting's adjourned. Aye. Thank you, Carlos.